What's up, everybody? And welcome back to the Ball Game Podcast. I'm John Cena. I'm Pete. Oh, wait. I'm Pizza Pete. I'm Perry the Platypus. I'm um, Pickle Rick. And I'm the saddest thing in the world, a Jets fan. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great, great way to introduce yourself yeah. over Being there, Being battered, bruised, and wrinkled, a Jets fan. Hell yeah. <laughs> Clemmy, welcome to the podcast. Thank, Thank you for coming you. on. Thank Very you. happy to have you here. You know yes, what? Sir. I want to switch my name to Pepperoni Pete. Why are you Pepperoni Pete? Because there's pepperonis on my Is that pizza. the only reason? Not because of your pepperoni nipples. That's... Hey, that was the implication. Yo! <laughs> That's what I was implying. Yeah, all, right, all, right, all right, we'll stick to, we'll stick to pizza, <laughs> pizza Pete. Pizza Pete? Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Petey Parmesan. Okay. Sorry. Well, your time is up, and ball game podcast's time is now. So, we have a lot of NFL. What? You you rehearsed that in the mirror. (laughs) A little bit. The time is now. Something's not right. (laughs) The time is now. And he was like, yeah. (laughs) The time is now. So, we actually have a lot of behind the scenes content from today that you guys will be seeing soon enough. So, don't even worry about it. Yeah, this is a process. This was was a process. A process. Uh, We obviously have a lot of stuff to talk about from the NFL. So, why don't we just get things started? So, obviously, Anthony Richardson, 10 32. I wish that that was a UFC time. Oh, my God. I fucked that intro up. Let me redo that one. Okay. Here we go. Pickle. (laughs) Yeah, is nobody going (laughs) to? It looks like he's passed out. (laughs) I don't know what he's doing. I couldn't tell you where he's staring. That's the best part about all this. No idea. Okay. sleeping. So today we're going to be talking about Anthony Richardson potentially being a bust. Is it too early to consider him that? We don't know. We'll talk about that. We're going to rank the AFC North in the order that we think they're going to finish. Of course, we're going to give our AFC and NFC wildcard predictions. And we're going to continue our series of building the best possible fantasy lineup using the AFC, the AFC West, and the NFC West separately. So fun one loaded podcast whole bunch of loads we're going to be dropping today guys so we're going to jump straight into things are you nervous me yeah a little bit i could tell (laughs) is it a little bit is it because you're john cena i'm so not comfortable in what i'm wearing in his intro he didn't mention anything about halloween and like that we're just casually dressed like this yeah yo happy halloween (laughs) happy halloween this is just what we wore today this isn't we didn't even dress for this This we didn't even talk to each other about that everyone just decided to wear cutting off the blood flow yeah you know he also says of course he said, of course we're going to be giving our wild card predictions. Yeah. What do you mean, Why is of, it of course? course? I don't know. It's a great question. Can't be of course. My sticker's still on my hat. I can't. Bro, yeah, why you take the hat off? Because it's Now you're not John Cena. Now you're just some flow. dweeb into his no, merch. Um, no. Pizza Cena. Oh, fire. This yeah. is so off the rails. <laughs> Pepperoni <laughs> Pizza Cena. Doesn't it have an adjustable back? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So well, adjust it, got it. Why are you bro? being a nerd right now? <laughs> Not the Velcro. Well, I can't move. The Velky? Yo, Velcro's crazy. You got the Velky? No snapbacky? Yeah. I feel so out of place. Yo. Everything's wrong today. Oh, oh. And you got the sticky on top. Yo, a Velcro hat with jorts is like... <laughs> yeah, you look like you're about to get on like the grill. It's the t- not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> it's the John Cena like look, bro. Oh, you also bam, had to wear bam, some, bam. some like dad sneakers a little bit. So. Yo, I'm yeah. freshly baked, bro. I just want to <laughs> eat you, bro. Yo, I want to eat you. Yo. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! <laughs> I'm just a small time detective. Pickles and pizza, and yeah, you are the detective. Yeah. yeah. Can you decipher um, what the fuck is going on right now? Um, No, not really. I'm off the clock. Fire. I'm Hell a podcasting yeah. platypus right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo. Platypus yeah. Platypus by day. But h- happy Halloween, everybody. Yeah. And happy Halloween. The- Speaking of Halloween, on Halloween Day, <laughs> you guys are seeing this Wednesday. So tomorrow, we are going to be at the Jets game. Filming some content before the game starts, having a big old tailgate. So if any of you guys are going to be at the Jets game, shoot us a DM. If you know us like that, shoot us a text. I don't know if you guys have our number, but shoot us a text, whatever, if you're going to be at the game and you want to link up and be in some of our content. So Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have well, your guys' numbers. You do? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. You should. It's getting leaked. <laughs> Everyone's going to leak. It's getting leaked. <laughs> yeah. All right, so 10-32 and a tap out, and I really wish I was talking about a UFC fight, but instead I'm talking about Anthony Richardson's day this past Sunday. 10 for 32, and this man took himself out of the game. 
franchise quarterback behavior? I think not. So is Anthony Richardson a bust? How do we feel? What's the fallout? Because Joe Flacco is going to be starting next Sunday. And I know we have some thoughts about this whole situation. So why don't you get us started, Kwame, since you are the guest? How do we feel about the Anthony Richardson situation? What are our immediate thoughts? I mean, do I think he's a bust talent-wise? No. Like, whatever's going on in his fucking head, though, gotta go. He's done. Um, I honestly, people get tired. I get it. <clears throat> but you're like the quarterback of, like, a huge franchise. Figure that shit out. Not yeah, gonna lie. Power through. You've nev- I've never seen, I don't even think I've seen anybody tap out. Soccer players, they run all fucking, the whole time. Well, every They'll other position out. does at some point or another. All the other positions do, yeah, except for offensive line. Out. Except for offensive line. I guess, that's true. But, but those, they, those are like, some big boys. Will tap their head if they're in. not tapping out, then why are you tapping out? Those are some hefty dudes. Pause. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, offensive big line pause. is tough. You gotta, it's... Oh, I'm into the year over here. We it? got Yo. first-hand experience. Damn. Oh, you were you were an offensive lineman? He was the yeah. offensive lineman oh, of the year. <laughs> No, the fuck you aren't. Are you serious? Uh, well, no. yeah, I mean, I want to. Yeah, I, I, the country is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you he had got recruited me. Like, to Bama, Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, We're actually not kidding. Pete was named Offensive Lineman of the Year for C. Yeah. yeah. Really? That is a real thing. Yeah, yeah. one year. Yeah. But not the year I was there. Oh, uh, no, you were there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sam's fucked then. I was like, I don't even know you went to C. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you went to C? Yeah. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I mean, the quarterback, you're the leader. You you set the example. Uh, you guys are supposed to follow your lead. You can't be tapping out of games, man. Yeah. It's just you're you're 22 years old. You are you are where you are because of your athleticism. So if you're not properly conditioned, then what are you doing? You're I mean, literally a physical specimen. Right. Like, and, nobody could do that. You have to be. And you're it. subbing yourself out. And listen, like, you had a 39-year-old quarterback outplaying you. Do you really want to send the message that you're not conditioned enough to outplay a 39-year-old quarterback? I mean, it's just – like you said, Clem, I know, I know we said uh, other positions do it, running backs will do it a lot, and pretty much everyone except offensive linemen, but quarterbacks don't do that. I mean, you know, some people are like, Brady didn't do that, Pat Mahomes. Forget that. Like, the the Baker Mayfields of the world and, and, you know, the not upper echelon guys, they don't they – Shit, don't you'll out. never find my boy Bryce Young doing some shit like that. <laughs> He might be ass, but Facts. he'd never do some shit like and that. Facts. And it's just it's, like you said. Lamar like, Jackson runs all the time. He ain't yeah, ever going to yeah, do yeah. that. And yeah. it's also that if you weren't such a piss poor thrower of the football, you wouldn't have to run so much. We know it's wild, too. He was like a couple weeks ago, there were talks of him being benched for Joe Flacco. Why wouldn't you want to prove everybody wrong and just ball out? And, and, like, and that just made your like, piss poor excuse even worse. Right. And you know, it's, that's what that's. And bro the, got up and said, I'm tired. And I'm the, ti- he's tired. I, and I there get were people it. that I were like, tired. I'm exhausted. The people were like, oh, why didn't he just lie? And it's and it's even worse because he didn't see anything wrong with just tapping out because he was tired. He went, yeah. in the post, he went in the press after, and I don't know who media trained him. Like, someone from the Colts media team should have got a hold of him beforehand and been like, hey, <laughs> don't fucking say you were tired. Failed him miserably. Yeah. yeah. And, um... And he didn't see an issue with just going out of the game because he was tired. It's like, dude, like, limp over yeah. to the sideline, cr- crunchy, uh, hold your stomach or something. Like, don't, act, dude, act, no, act like you're like, hurt. Lie, you literally break. lie. Like, do not yeah. say you were tired. It's just, it sets a horrible example for the locker room. I mean, well, the guy's blocking for you. They're tired. The running back is tired. The receivers are tired. The defense trying to bail you out of your terrible offensive game. They're exhausted. Like, you cannot be the, the guy. The fans are tired. Right. No question. Is Anthony Richardson a captain on the team? I mean, he's the quarterback. No, but is he a captain? I don't think he's named. Whether captain, so, no, whether he's it's... captain or not, if you're the quarterback, you are. Yeah, but it oh, just it just makes things better. Yeah, you know. What you I mean? are the like, captain of the football team. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, like, like you're, you're yeah. looked at as the guy to set the example to le- be a leader of men. And yes, he's for, the captain. Oh, for he's some like, people, yes, yes. he is officially wow. named. The, okay. Yeah, that's tough, man. And the thing is, like at 22, like that sometimes that's unfair to ask of a kid. Like sometimes that's very unfair. He is young. But from everything we've seen, like he seemed to be the type of guy that was capable of doing something like yep. that. And then for you. For you to not understand the precedent you're setting for the remainder of the team is just insane to me. Because you you never come out of the game because you are such a leader of the offense. You are the focal point of the <clears throat> offense. So I found it insane. I think everyone found it insane for that matter. But uh, 
Yeah, there's there's zero excuses. I've seen a few yeah. people trying to defend him like every other position does it. It doesn't fucking matter because no. you're not held to the same standard of every just, other position. Right. It goes to show how truly inexperienced he is. Like like I said, not only the fact that he tapped out, but the fact that he didn't think there was anything wrong with it afterwards. Yeah, He's he only played how many how many football games has he played? Like, 10 NFL football games. 10 NFL games and not many in college or even high school. Like I think he's played 20ish total in he's the missed last so like, much four time years and last sport. year he was I'm sure he was in and out of the facility because of rehab for his shoulder and everything so he just hasn't been around a lot of professional football and it goes to and it, it shows in this situation I mean you got like I know he needs reps because he needs to improve his accuracy and that's the biggest thing but he's got to learn how to be a quarterback he has to learn like there's intangibles that come with being a quarterback that are just as important as what you can do on the field most so, definitely. The plus, like, plus, like, you would think, like, you, know, you got Joe Flacco right behind you. Like, you think you won't lose your job for fucking doing that? And this guy, yeah, and this you guy's, know? like, ready to go. Like, he showed that he's a better quarterback than you. Joe like, Flacco yeah, wants yeah. to he's go. Right, like, he's bro, they win with him. Yeah. yeah. Right, he's right behind you, and, and you should be sitting there saying, man, I need, I need a break, but, like, this guy's going to take my job, and that's exactly what happened. And do we think that the Colts would have won if uh, yes. Joe Flacco was starting that game? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think the Colts yeah. are a much better team with Joe yeah, Flacco. Than that that offense is 10 times better with Joe Flacco. What about you, Pickle Rick? Yeah, I mean, this is exactly what we said a few weeks ago, though, when Anthony Richardson was set to return from injury. We said the team was rolling with Joe Flacco, and God forbid they switch back to Anthony Richardson and he plays bad. And then you have to go back to Joe Flacco. We talked about it a few weeks ago with the Steelers. What's your, your famous line, Matty J? If you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterbacks. So this switching between quarterbacks thing is, on top of the other stuff, is a bad message for the locker room. And it's mm -hmm. hard for those guys to be motivated. And sure, developing Anthony Richardson is a big priority for this team. At the end of the day, for any football organization, the number one priority is winning football games. And switching between quarterbacks like that, you're not going to win many games. It's as simple as that. The guys aren't going to want to block. They're not going to want to run their routes hard. They're not going to want to, like you said, Tom, bail you out on defense. So then on top of him playing terrible, like you guys mentioned, you as a quarterback cannot tap out of a game. No. In all of our years of watching football, we have never, ever, ever seen that before. We, I'm sure we've seen guys tap out maybe because they had a cramp or maybe they lied. Maybe they were tired and they lied. But to go, like you said, Tom, to go up there to the press conference and say, oh, yeah, I was tired, I was running a lot, is inexcusable. It's inexcusable. He is not seeing the football field for the rest of the year. That that is This is a team yep. who, I mean, the implications of this game were massive. Right. They're what now? One and two in the division. This was for the division lead. Mm -hmm. This was for the division lead. And you sucked and you lost the game with your terrible play. 10 for 32 is inexcusable. And, and he didn't then, rush for 300 and something yards. Like, it wasn't. <laughs> He, what did he rush for, like, 60, I think it was? It was point. not high. It was nothing to where he should have been tapping the helmet no. saying, get me out of here. No. Like Six and I carries for 45 yards and a lost fumble, yeah. which is another issue that he has is he, he loses the football. Right. And, like and then the other saying, issue is he gets hurt. And like you were saying in all the group chats today, Matty J, the worst part of it all is he hasn't shown any single sign of improvement. Yep. And I know it was only three games last year, but he looked better last year than he does yeah. this year. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. He hasn't had one good game yet. The first game was cool. He made a couple cool throws, and you right, saw the, the potential there. Good, yeah. But, like, <clears throat> he hasn't had a good game as a quarterback yet this year. It's it's done for him this year. Like, that was, that was the last straw. And I do firmly believe they probably would have just wrote it out with him if he didn't do this nonsense. If he was just playing bad, they probably would have just wrote it out. But you, like you guys said, you do this nonsense, and the message it sends to the locker room is terrible. You got the like you got. We keep saying the receivers running their routes hard, the, the offensive line blocking, all that stuff. Well, if this guy gets to just take a playoff because he's tired, we're gonna take a playoff because we're tired too. Yeah. Like so, it's just a terrible message. Like I brought up, I brought up Baker Mayfield before, and. That guy, I, I say it all the time, I love watching Baker Mayfield take off and just drop his shoulder into somebody. Does Baker 100% believe that he can run over a linebacker? <laughs> Probably not. But he knows that if his uh, that as the he quarterback, might. 
he, he can, you know, he did. He gets he the job can. done. He definitely. But as a quarterback, if he's out there being aggressive, fighting for the extra yards like his his guys are supposed to, he knows that lights a fire under them and makes them want to do the same thing. And you tapping out of a game, there's just there's just no. It's all bad. Everything. No. Any any message that sends is just really bad. Now I will say the one thing. Sometimes about, you can't teach that shit either. No, like, like you Baker's just have, probably, he was yeah. like dog. That, dog. Yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't teach, teach that. that. That's Baker an was, Baker thing, was yeah. that in college too. Like right. you just he just had that leadership to him, and everybody fought for him. He had it, that, It's wild. Some guys like Baker, Matt Stafford, and other guys like go. yeah, make you want to run through a wall for them. Yeah, and uh, you you need that, and you know the way Anthony Richardson plays, I thought he had it, and I, I never would have expected this from a from a guy like him. And he got that um, chihuahua in him, right? But yeah, but the <laughs> but the one in thing, the body of a fucking Rottweiler. Yeah, yeah, that's he's like he has all the like talent in the world to be great, but he doesn't have like the the mental to be there. That's the no. worst part about it all. He's just like I said, just a very very inexperienced. Um, but the Colts are still going with him for the future. Like I'm sure that's how that conversation went. Is like, hey, you're you're done for this season. We're going to go with Joe because he gives us – and you're going to sit behind him. You're going to learn. You're going to be better next year, and we're going to put you right back out there. You sure and you're going to be the future of this franchise. You sure should hope he's better next year. Um, but I, I'll say this. Uh, Dean was defending him in the chat, and I think Dean was defending him in the chat because he has him in Dynasty. Makes sense. I think he, he right. was just a massive Yo, fan. checks out. So. Dean sucks. Dean's <laughs> team fucking sucks. Bro, I haven't won a game since Tom Brady was still in the league, bro. Bro, Tom wow. Brady oh, was you're like actively tanking. Tom, you don't exactly, have like makes exactly. So exactly. Tom Brady yeah. was still in the league the last time I won, won a game. I lost not one, not two, not three. Carry on, not 20, not 21, mm. but 22 <laughs> straight games. That was good. And then Dean talking all that shit to Sullivan about beating him in the regular. I did that shit for you, Matty J. Mm. Everyone prays on your downfall in this league. Fuck Sully, they say. Yeah. Fuck Sully, they say. Dean talking all that shit. Well, I beat you. I have the most regular season wins. <laughs> you lost to me. Bro, I'm trying to lose, bro. I just That's lost true. out on Genty because your team is so ass, Dean. I tipped the cap. My God, your team sucks. You it lost, is fuck Sully, though. Bro, he lost to Bucky Irving and man. fucking Cade Ott. And yeah, now I'm back on that. Yeah, but for this Sully week, in the <laughs> bro, I wanted is. to beat Dean so bad, and I can't believe my team. Jaden Daniels, bro. I will never forget Poor that moment, bro. I won't, cause I won by two points. I won by two points. If Jaden wow. Daniels doesn't throw that hell mary, I lose. So Jaden Daniels, I you have a special place in my heart, my friend. You as know, if, as if he didn't before this. Yeah, he definitely yeah. doesn't. Oh my god, yeah, for yeah. sure. First of all, fuck Dean. Uh, second of all, uh, my point was. Sorry. Um, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I needed that. I appreciated that, and I was happy that came out until the end. Um, we said fuck all. It's fun. Right. No, no, no. I love that. I love my haters. <laughs> uh, sure it's does. it's all good. Who said um, I love my haters? <laughs> comment comment Walmart sketch if you're seeing this right now. All right, <laughs> love those haters too. Exactly. Um, so I'll say this. My point being, Dean was saying how they should just ride out Anthony Richardson for the rest of the year, how he's the future of their franchise, and it's about more than just this year. You also have guys on the roster that want to win, are yeah. paid to win, that mm -hmm. want to be there to play, and you're going to set a horrible example if you're riding with a guy that so clearly does not give you the best chance to win on a week-to-week -week basis. Josh Downs and Michael Pittman, when Anthony Richardson are in, are irrelevant. They do not matter. They look like they're, they don't even belong on a football field. You have Joe Flacco, and those two look like one of the best wide receiver duos in the, M in the yeah. NFL. Oh, my God. M oh, MLB, NBA. NBA. I was going to go for both. <laughs> um, in the NFL. So it's like you, you got to realize you have other players to worry about to develop and all that stuff. So, And then there's the people who are saying, well, actually, Anthony Richardson's 5-5 five five in his first 10 starts. Josh Allen was 4-6. and six. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Josh Allen would never, no. ever, <laughs> ever check himself out of it. Josh Allen plays will play with a broken fucking leg. I think about a former Colts quarterback who he didn't do this with the Colts, but Mr. P. River, one of my all-time goats, played a playoff game with a goddamn torn ACL, and you're checking yourself out because you're tired? Get some more fucking sleep, bro. Another Colts quarterback that dealt with all the injuries yep. in the world that just toughed it out, leader of men, Andrew Luck. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that it's man had bro. every hey, man, single hey, man, injury snap. Yeah. under the sun the snap. and had neck surgery. Yeah. You, you don't just recover from neck surgery like that. No, it's yeah, it's uh, it's just such it's a wild. bad. And like, I'm not. So the question is, the hook of the segment was, is Anthony Richardson a bust? 
I'm not there yet. No, me neither. I'm not there yet. I think there's still so much untapped potential, but... The this needs to be fixed. Yeah. On all ends. Yeah. Because yeah. the Colts as an organization aren't an excuse, too. Because, like again, like we said weeks ago, we've been known they should have just rode it out with Flacco this right. year. Once Anthony Richardson got hurt the first time and Flacco came in and you were winning football games, we all sat up here and said their best chance to win is with Joe Flacco. So if they just did the right thing from the first place, like we're saying now, hey, we're going to ride it out with Flacco. You're still our future. Learn from him. Get ready to go for next year like we're predicting they're going to do for the rest of this year. If they just did that three weeks ago, then this whole situation doesn't happen. And now maybe 20% of that locker room doesn't fucking hate you. Honestly. Yeah. Because... Like, I'm not going to say he completely lost the trust of everyone within the organization, but there are some specific guys, I'm sure, who are not going to forget this. Like, that, again, it's something we've never, ever, I've never, ever seen Did before you see in my time watching football. When he actually tapped his helmet, Jonathan Taylor, I don't know if the, if he was, like, reacting to it and even realized what's happening. It's possible he didn't, but it looked like he did a double take, and he was looking and staring at Anthony Richardson. It's almost like, is this guy fucking serious? Like, I'm running for my life out here. I'm trying to bail him like you know like i'm trying to i dealt with a hot a, a fucking sprained like, ankle this year win, and i'm, I'm trying, trying to, to get out game. here like i'm trying to win this game and this guy this guy's tired are you kidding me like it's it's unreal yeah. yeah. in a game that was so there for the taking uh, right yeah so I, again especially like i said with the what was at stake in this like this wasn't just your normal regular season game this was a very important game in terms of playoff implications going forward and we might look back you know five weeks from now and say this is where the Colts season ended and this is why they missed the playoffs because they didn't win this game. Yeah. So, Brothers gas tank was empty with four minutes left in the third quarter. Third quarter? Yeah, it's... it's third it's quarter. Bad. You just it's don't bad. do that, man. You no, just don't can't do, do that. It. I don't know how you can as like a, as like a athlete who, whether or not you have 10 games in the NFL or 40 games, but like you're built to do that. It's your job. Like you have, you go out there every Sunday and you. Yeah. It's your job. If a you're doctor, supposed to be if conditioned. A, if a surgeon has a has like surgery to perform, he's not like, man, I just came off a twelve hour rotation. Yeah. I can't do this. He's like, like three hours oh, in. He, yeah, he I can't a, do this. Gotta get another a guy. Five hour energy and he cuts it up. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I, up <laughs> to go to the name of the segment, I I think he's a bust. I, I I'm ready to put the label on him. I mean, uh, like, I mean, he is a bust. Like, I don't even think it's like, a, oh, like. He to like, this point. To this point, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. To this he busts short. I but think. Like he, I think like right. maybe Post. in a <laughs> maybe in a couple stops, maybe eventually it works. But like for me, for you to literally show not a single bit of progression and like it goes under the radar. I'm pretty sure he had to rehab for part of the off season or something. But mm -hmm. it, like that that should be mentioned as well. But for you to have regressed and, and not even look slightly better. You've gotten significantly worse, it seems, in a Shane Steichen offense, a guy that we all call an offensive genius. Yeah. Um, and then I'm not saying he should be looking like a vet in Joe Flacco, but I mean, he should be looking bro, better. You got to look better than yeah, this. Yeah, better so, than game game. and then for him to say at at the podium as well, oh, I'm a running quarterback. So like, whenever like I, that's not my game necessarily. So like to be accurate. In reference to being accurate. Right. And it's just, oh, boy, what the hell happened Yo, here? Yeah, um, you got thumb. So it's just like, in, in reference to him being accurate, you don't respond with that. Tell the people, yeah, I'm working every week to get better. You're the quarterback, it, bro. bro. Just tell us bullshit. Just, I'd rather you lie blatantly to my well, face. Well, that, that goes back to the point that you were making, say, Tom, yeah, and what I was saying was, like, <clears throat> the Colts as an organization are not blameless in this. How is he not media trained enough to not say stupid shit like that? Like you, grab him before the game. He had an anyway, all-time bad Not interview. even like the media like, training. Listen like, to what you coach. just said. He is an NFL quarterback, and he said accuracy isn't his game. It's not what I do. <laughs> like, I I'll He's say it again. An do. NFL. He said it feels good coming off his hand. An though. NFL quarterback said accuracy isn't his game. That is ridiculous. It doesn't that, even make sense. Whether accuracy is or isn't your game, you don't fucking say that. You say I, I, I'm really confident in my accuracy. I'm working every day to make. To right, be it'll like, get better. That's it. It'll get so better. So and leave it at that. But we know accuracy is in his game. Cause right. Not, we know that. Not, you, don't, not right. you don't, you don't have, have to say it. We knew that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're just telling us shit we already know. Like, that's, that's all it is. Shit that I can look up online. Yeah. I don't yeah. think he's a bust, though. I just, he's still, he's 22 years old. A anybody at 22 years old, we were probably saying some dumb shit, too. So I'm going to mm -hmm. say with a little sure. bit of a, uh, a little bit of training can go a long way. Because, yes, he's not like the Peyton Mannings or the Andrew Lux. 
but you you train that shit. And if it if if it gets better, awesome. If it doesn't, you know where you stand with him. Yeah. Again, at That's the end the of the day, he's not just younger, but also has so much less experience than yeah. even some of these guys that are in college right now. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so there's still room for all this stuff to work itself out. And like, mm-hmm. I think we could all agree, it's just a raw talent. Like, he has it. Raw yeah, athlete. Sure. Right. He he is a raw so much athlete. So that everything he's he done is. to this point, they still believe in him long term. Right. You know. So. Yeah, and I, honestly, like, I'm not going to lie. I still believe in him. T- I don't think he'll be, you no know, top five quarterback. He'll never right. be MVP Cam Newton no. like, you know, people were comparing him to. But I think just having... Solid Teddy Bridgewater. Having the dual threat Jesus ability Christ. of having that... That's what we're comparing that, that type of cannon to. of an arm and <laughs> that type of rushing upside and being that big down in the goal line. Yeah. Like, there's no reason he shouldn't oh. be able to be a good NFL quarterback. There's a good career in there. Yeah, yeah I, I, I still I do agree believe with he has a good career in You got to bring, so. just bring it out of him. That's it. Yeah. Just shifting gears And the Colts bit. know oh. what they're doing over there. Easier yeah. said than done, though. Yes. Yeah. Shifting gears a little bit. After a Monday night football win and a instant classic between the Ravens and the Browns where Jameis Winston put on for the entire city, the Steelers somehow, some way, find themselves atop the AFC North at 6-2 and two after beating the Giants on Monday Night Football. They made the switch to Russell Wilson. We gave them some backlash for it. Mm. They're 2-0 and since. So before we do the other thing, do we have any quick thoughts about the Steelers right now where they stand, you know, making the move to Russell Wilson? Um, <clears throat> I mean, you got to – there are a lot of people out there who owe Mike Tomlin an apology. I mean, we – we got up here and said, like, we didn't really understand the move. You were winning with Justin Justin Fields. I almost said Justin Wilson. Um, Justin you were Wilson. winning with Justin Fields, but I think Tomlin realized that he said, I'm not winning because of Justin Fields. We're just – we're getting by with him out there. I think we'll win because of Russell Wilson, and he's been pretty damn good yeah. since he's since he's, he's gone out there. So, I mean, George I think Pickens the looks way looks better. better. Yeah, the offense looks better. The running game looks better. The offensive line looks better. It's just the team's better with Russell Wilson yeah. out there. It's as simple as that. So Tomlin, the guy knows what he's doing, and they're at, they're at the top of the division and maybe looking to make a move. I mean, I know they've, they've been really desperate for a wide receiver for a long time. So, mm, you know who would have um, been good for them? Devontae yeah. Adams. Deontay Johnson. He would have been great Deontay for them. Johnson. He would have been terrific for them. But, you know, he Ironic. went for such a – such a steep price that they, you know, they couldn't. You know, they also yeah. traded, they him, traded him, so they yeah. weren't going to trade right back for it, him. Yeah. Could you imagine um, trading back for him? That would have been, be, been nuts. Be crazy. Yeah. That would have been nuts. Um, quick thought. I mean, Mike Tomlin is who we thought he was. I mean, he. we said one thing when we had that conversation. We said, Mike Tomlin, this could be the, a brilliant move, and Mike Tomlin could look like a genius because he knows more football than we do. And that proved to be the lasting point of everything we said. Mm-hmm. So uh, I saw a stat that play action passes with Justin Fields, he averaged like 46 yards on play action uh, over his six starts. And over the last two starts, Russell Wilson's thrown for over 250 yards in play action passing. Uh, so, yeah. Just goes to show that Russ just runs the offense better than Justin Fields yeah. could ever even imagine. So, obviously, I think this was the right move. Their defense is lights out. You know, the Giants had an okay game yesterday with them, but, you know, defense is lights out. Steelers are legit. So mm. Yeah, at the end of the day, the <clears throat> team with Daniel Jones doesn't have any sort of advantage. No. But, no. Yeah, I was surprised at how close that game kind of got, though, especially for a team with – Steelers um, are never yeah. gonna blow nobody out. Yeah, no, no just, the Steelers never had enough, enough weird. Weird. except for the That's Jets. Thing, yeah. True, true, day, true, 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 poverty, Sacri- poverty except for them franchise boys there, coming so. in hot. I also think Mike Tomlin knows that. Like, I think that team is like ready to win. If not, you're almost there. And I think Russell Wilson being they're, in that like Super Bowl, he was a Super Bowl winning. The best roster they've had in years. Yeah, 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 probably. Yeah, you're definitely right. It's probably since the Lev Bell and AB. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hundred percent. So they're yes. ready to win now, and I think Russell Wilson definitely gives them that best opportunity to win now. And you hope that he can mold that Justin Fields can mold into that Russell Wilson. And Arthur Smith, man, lights yeah, out, bro. Credit, man. Lights credit. out. How many how many four hundred yard games does he have this year? It's like three, three, yeah, three four hundred plus yard games with again Justin Fields and Russell Wilson. Like nobody, not nobody, but a lot of people counting him out, and he's been great for them. He's apparently meshing with the team really well too. Like they all they all love him as a as a guy and in their locker room. Like he's, well, didn't he come from the Steelers or he? he 
Him and Mike Tomlin had some sort Did of a they? relationship I don't previously. Know, no, I don't think so. No, nah, I think he was with Variable in Tennessee. Yeah, yes, he was. That he, sounds right. He had Derrick Henry. Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, shit, Najee Harris has gotten going recently. I was too, about to so. say, that's been... That's like, the biggest three thing. Three straight 100-yard rushing games. He's, yeah. the, the run game's been... I, I guess it's a Russell Wilson thing, maybe. I don't know, but... The run game's been on fire, which in turn, like you said, Matty J, it opens up the play-action game. So, you know, big wins for them. And, and like you guys said, and we said it two weeks ago when they made the move, we shitted on uh, Mike Tomlin. We said it was the wrong move. But I think the three of us in agreement made sure to say at the end of the day, when it's Mike Tomlin, you got to have blind faith in yeah. that guy and just trust that he knows what a he's lot of, doing. There, there are guys that earn that, like just – this guy knows what he's doing. Like, yeah. And that's why he's the been organization for a while. Him. He's a winning coach. He's just, yeah. Yeah. Pete, I, you have any quick thoughts on the Steelers? Yeah, no. I feel like uh, I feel like the Steelers defense is their whole team. <laughs> like, um, has but, been for a long time. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, the identity, man. At the end of the day, like, it's shocking to see a team that's having um, a quarter. I wouldn't even say a quarterback problem, but a team who has two quarterbacks and a really iffy quarterback situation actually pull through at six and two. Yeah. Um. You know what? It's halfway through the season, right? Ish. About, you know what yeah, I mean? And like, I'm gonna be honest. I looked at the Steelers coming to the season, and I was, I wouldn't say I was a top one hater, but I definitely wasn't uh, a top one lover for them. You know sure, what I mean? Yeah. Like, I didn't look at that team and say like, oh yeah, like, oh you they're gonna they're gonna be six and two by fucking yeah. week eight or nine, whatever we're up to. Yeah. And um, yeah. I mean, I'm honestly kind of uh, taken back at how well they've been doing. Um, but I will say is like they're keeping their games like a little bit too close for comfort. Um, oh my I'm god! I'm sorry, but I have to react to that. Wow! Eyes on foot. Wow! Wow! What, what a fucking guy! Let's fucking guy. go! Let's what go. a guy! Wow! You fucking go! Wow. wow. Oh, my God. That All arena right. is definitely electric right now. Yeah, you guys went to the wrong game. We sure did. Uh, <laughs> we sure <holy> did. Holy <laughs> shit. That's wow. For, wow. What? Damn, For look at that. Wow. Tino Beautiful. Martinez. Wow. That might have Rocket. Been mm. we, we needed that one. That was, yeah. that was huge. That could that be the huge. shot in the arm. Yeah. And wow. the bottom of the order comes up clutch, too. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. That's great for the top order. No. Let's go, Volpe. Let's go. Look at that. Um, yeah, yeah, Mike Tomlin's yeah. goaded. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Steelers. So. Mike Tomlin's him. Like yeah. we said, mm -hmm. the Steelers sit atop the AFC North. So we are going to be ranking the AFC North based on how we think things are going to shake out by season's end. Who wants to get it started? Um, I'm I'm comfortable to go first. Yeah. Go from four Eight. to one. Yeah, uh, go from four to one. Yes. Yep. All right. Well, <laughs> at four, I feel like this is just way too easy of a decision, but it's definitely the Browns. Um, they got a lot to figure out. I don't think they're playoff contenders by no means. And with that being said, I am more than comfortable with them at four. Um, at three, um, I'm okay with putting the Bengals at three with obviously the Steelers and Ravens being above them. That's not the order. But um, I'm okay with the Bengals being at three. Um, it's hard to rank them above teams that – you know, got them beat by two wins already. So um, I know that they're oh, on paper, like their roster, like like it's a beautiful thing, but their record says otherwise. They're that, ugly. They're a little ugly. They're a little messy. I'm, you know, not too crazy about it. I I have been liking the black and white um, logo. Yeah. You know, the colorway they have going sure. on. Looks Those really uniforms fresh. are hot. Yeah, it's it's good eye candy, but you know. Um, I can't. You don't win football I was just games. Gonna, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was just gonna say the <laughs> exact same say? thing. I was gonna say the exact same thing he said. I can't. You don't win football games. Yeah. So same as Joe Burrow it does though. Nah. The. Sweet. So all right, at two, um, it was really really hard, um, because obviously we got the Steelers and the Ravens, you know, sitting there at one and two. So with this being a very hard decision, um, I, after watching how these teams played, um. This weekend, um, unfortunately, and I don't didn't want to have to do this. I'm gonna have to put the Ravens at two. A um, couple reasons for that. Um, I just kind of talked about how the Bengals, um, you know, I, I could I just talk about how the Bengals don't really got much going on and really together for them. Mm -hmm. They beat the Bengals by three points, sure. dude. It was forty-one to thirty-eight. They oh. let the Bengals score thirty-eight Shootout, points yeah. on them, and well, like they could score as like as much as like you know the uh, the Ravens are a very good offensive team, and historically they're a good defensive team. 
a game like that just goes to show maybe their defense isn't as good as we really thought they are. And also looking back, um, the Raiders beat beat the Ravens this year. Sure did. Which was – how the fuck did that happen? Yeah. With that being said, that made me okay with putting them at two. And, of course, the team we were just talking about had the Steelers at number one, a defense that is too good. Um, uh, they kept the Lions – a one touchdown game, seventeen to twenty four, and um, I know they lost against the Lions, but you're we're watching the Lions. Russell like, didn't play that game, right? Um, no, it was Field Justin Fields, Fields is Fields in, game, yeah. and we're watching the Lions like absolutely beat up teams. Yeah, yeah. And here are the Steelers, seven. You know they only lost by one touchdown, seventeen to twenty four, and That's a good point. And you know, with that being said, I consider the Lions a Super Bowl contender. Like Best this year, sure, yeah. I am selling. Pete, I am buying that high. Pete, I love you. I hate to interrupt. What's up? That was in the preseason. Bamboozled. What? The Lions and the... Uh, oh, that was a preseason game? Preseason mm. game. You know what? It was Ooh. so good that it should have counted for the regular season. <laughs> I think that's what he was getting at. But, yeah. That's what he was doing. Yeah, you're whatever. Right, you're right, so, you're right. And Justin Fields did play that game. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> it's, it was... It was <laughs> Russell Wilson also played that game, but... Oh, that was that really? I have season? no idea, to be honest. Like, I didn't pay enough attention to that I had full confidence shit. in him. I mean, uh, uh, just goes to yeah, show, nah. you say things confidently enough, people don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's a number one sales technique. Aside right from that, if you do look at the Steelers, how they've been playing this year, all their games are generally lower scoring. So yeah. if you look at both teams, not, it's not like the Steelers are scoring much, but they're not letting the other team score a lot either. Yeah. And all, across the long haul of that, you know, that branch, like it's going to be pretty steady. They're, they're going to come out on on top, you know, um, as a winning team this season. So mm-hmm. for that reason, and I think that's a lock. So for that reason, I put them at one over the Ravens as of going into week nine. Cool. I mean, yeah. cool. I'll go next. You, uh, you made some good points there, Pete. Um, Bottom two, couldn't agree more. Cleveland Browns, I have a number four. Boo. Um, what? I boo both of you. You boo Come both. On. James Ravens. Winston James is brother. the best quarterback in that What the division. fuck are okay. we doing? Um, I love J-Bo, but this Browns roster is just not that good. The I mean, Browns ain't doing it, enough. man. Yeah. They just traded away Amari Cooper. Zadarius yeah. Smith is probably getting traded. I don't think the traded. roster's bad. No, the roster's definitely not bad. I'm happy Nick Chubb's good. back, but Bro. I mean. No. It was a Deshaun Watson problem. Yeah. Yeah, okay. but we're yeah. talking right Their now. Their offensive line still up, is not good. Up, up to now, they are not better. James than just hung three fifty out they there. Ju- they, Watson right. can't imagine of doing right. something against like they, that against oh, the look. Raven secondary that isn't very that hasn't been very good. Would Deshaun have hung three fifty on him? Absolutely not. Up to now, I would not say the Browns could beat any of those other three teams. The Steelers, the they Ravens, just did. or the Bengals. I just think, what, oh, like, what? what? They just That's did. just not true. They oh, could yeah. beat the Ravens. Right, they just right, beat right, the right, right, team right. that we're going to put in first. Okay. So they beat the Ravens, and, I mean, there were a lot of bad plays by the Ravens. where they James could have had three picks. No, no, I'm just, yeah. He sh- and he should I, I get that. Kyle Hamilton, don't know how he dropped that. <clears throat> but, I'm t- like, this Browns team just isn't that good. They Like I said, they just traded away Amari Cooper. They're going. They're probably going to trade away Zadarius Smith on the defensive side of the ball. I know you still have Miles Garrett out there and a bunch of pieces on defense, but the Browns just aren't very good. And at the end of the day, they only have one win right now. I mean, the Browns? Two. Two, two, two. two. I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 Look, the thing is, even if even though the Browns beat the Ravens, because um, that's what happened, right? Let's yes. confirm. Yes. I, I'm missing a lot of facts <laughs> today. Right. What happened. Um, even though that happened... What are we gonna say? The 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 Browns are ranked second in this division, and they have a. a an, I mean, yeah, we're arguing. They have two wins. This so, <laughs> no, 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 you know what no, I mean. But like, still, but still, like, I'm just saying, I'm not throwing the Browns completely away. Like, like we're just like basically, you guys are implying you're throwing the Browns completely away. Look, look, I'm gonna put it like this. Jameis Winston says they're about to go on a miraculous fucking run. Mm. I'm going to trust that Jameis Winston is about to go on a miraculous Facts. fucking run. Facts. You know why? Because you know he's got the power that? of faith yeah. on you know his side. Say to that? Hear me out. Hear me, Pickle. Hallelujah. Let Tom finish his list and then go. Oh. Yeah, no, I was only one team. Yes. Um, That's that kind of how this is supposed to work. Yes. I'm supposed to give the list, give the points, and yep. then we rebuttal. You don't disrespect John Cena like yeah, that. Yeah, but, but look, to be fair, <laughs> well, to be fair we, don't, can't, can't even we see don't end him. up arguing. Randy Orton's yeah. better. <laughs> we don't end up arguing because we forget each other's list. So I have well, to give you shit that. for that. You fucking moron. Yeah, you so. just got to remember. Just be better. What? Um. Anyway. I can, what? I can't see. No, I hear something. Because now, now when you're... Sorry, Tom. Go ahead. But now... See, this is why we podcast, so people are learning with us. Now, when you're going to give your list, and you're going to have the Browns higher than everyone else, everything that you're going to say, 
you just said already. already yeah. well, no, I really don't. Up. I because I like realistically, I don't. I don't have to. When we do that, when we do the ranking, I'm not gonna dive too deep into how far I'm gonna put the Browns because then I'm not beefing with anybody in that moment. Like I'm not beefing with anybody in that moment. No, I got beef with you in that moment. After. All right. Oh, All right. Whatever. Anyway, Go ahead, Tom. At number three, shockingly, I have the Cincinnati Bengals. Right. Wow. Um, just wow. again, not a very good team. The other two teams are just very much uh, so much better than them. Um, I know you got Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, and, you know, the offense can can be volatile at times and put up a ton of points, but that defense has just lost so much. I have no faith in it. Um, at number two, Pete, I'm going to have to disagree with you here. I have the Pittsburgh Steelers. I I don't know. Uh, like, it's this, they've been playing some good ball, but I want to see them in some in some battles. And I know they make games battles that don't have to be. Like, they yeah. – they, play these games close. Chris, you said it before. They do just enough to win all the time. And at the end of the day, yeah, sure, that's going to win you games. Um, but I just don't think they're the best team in this division because the best team in the division is the Baltimore Ravens. I know they still have some things to figure out on the defensive side of the ball in that secondary. They made a move today. Uh, could be some more moves down the line to get that get that defense bolstered. Um, but the best offense in the league to this point, second best offense in the league, if you want to throw the lines up there, fine. Um but they got better adding Deontay Johnson. I mean, they got a guy who's now the best wide receiver on their team. The two days after they just lost the game because their guys couldn't catch passes. So um, they're committed to getting better. They're committed to being the best. And I think they will be by the end of the season. I agree All with right. most of the list. Yeah, sure. Oh, was I not supposed to go? No, no, you go ahead. Oh, that's fine. Um, to a lot of Sully's points, trust in Jameis Winston. I'm not going to lie. What do you? Uh, okay. Yeah. What? No, no, go Don't ahead. No, because I love Jameis Winston. <laughs> yeah. Don't Don't I love Jameis Winston, too. Give you a list. Go the ahead. Browns are going to be the Browns. I have them at four. Not nope. going to lie. They do. It's just they're they're the Browns, and the other three te- the teams in that division are just better offensively and far better defensively, I think. Mm. like at least, at least the Steelers. The Steelers, yes. Like you said, the Ravens have some holes that they have to fix, but they are fixing those holes with, like, adding Deontay Johnson, and they could still add some defensive pieces, like you said. But, yeah, it's, it's the Browns at three. Mm-hmm. I'm just nope, going to leave four. it there. Four, yep. sure. Three, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ooh. Only because I do think that they're a great football team. Uh, I do think also it only gets harder from here. Mm. Who were their last three games? Their it was the three? Jets, the Giants. Oh, they're all the ones that they played? The Raiders, the Jets, Raiders, the Giants. Jets, yep. Giants. The Raiders, Jets, Giants. Those are not good football teams. Nope. And what you said, then someone said it before. They haven't played any of the division games yet. Yeah, yeah. So have, now, you, have now you're fighting games. for like placement and playoffs, and those teams are going to come out a lot harder. Um, what was that on number three? That was number three, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. Pittsburgh Steelers, yeah. <laughs> yep. And then uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. Number They're on number two. They're going to turn it around. Their offense is still dynamic. I don't care what anybody says. It's Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase. Mm. You can't count them out until it's all said and done. I'm just going to be honest. Their defense, yes, is not great. Not going to lie. But with that offense, they could still, they can keep up with the best offense in the league, I think. Sure. I'm not going to lie. And you're throwing the ball like like as Joe Burrow does. Um, it, I, you just can't count them out. And the Steelers, like I said, the st- only reason is because the Steelers still have a lot of long ways to go and hard-fought battles to go. Mm-hmm. Number one is the Baltimore Ravens. It's it's easy. It's not rocket science. The Baltimore Ravens are the second-best offense in the league, and after they fix their little quirks on defense, I think they'll be just as good on defense. Um, and Jim or John Harbaugh, I don't know who it is. <laughs> they John. are John. <laughs> they're, he's a, he's a great coach, John Harbaugh. They're he's, both great. They're they both, both great. great. They are yeah, both great. Yeah. Look I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that shit is. But it tastes good. <laughs> yeah, sure. Whatever. The little the caramel that thing. The little car- uh, caramel. Stop it! I'll tear uh, him up live. Tear him alive. <laughs> <laughs> um, funny clip. <laughs> yeah, and they added Deontay Johnson. So now they have now they have a great wide receiver group. Um, and King Henry still back there. Still going to run down. And, that, and that right tackle they've had all season has really come alive. Like, he's catching touchdowns. Oh, what's his name? <laughs> Ma, Ma, Mark Andrews? Mandrews? Yeah. Mandrews. <laughs> that yeah, right yeah. Tackle. I was so God. confused. I was like, what's the Still in right first place in that best ball league, bro. Mark oh, Andrews came alive. This shit is right. Oh, my gosh. Thank God. I, I really want want nothing to do with Mark Andrews. <laughs> 
I can't believe I dropped him in that league. They, they have an extra center in the backfield, too, that usually winds up there. His name is uh, Patrick Ricard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have a He's linebacker. A you have a linebacker yeah. from, like, the 1990s playing running back, yeah. running a 4-4. Four, four, so. Yeah, they're all just units. They are. They are that's, definitely that's units. A bunch of units out there. That's a great way to put it. A bunch it. of refrigerators running around. Um, I'll give my list quick. Uh, I have the Cincinnati Bengals fourth. Uh, I think their defense is absolute dog shit. Yeah. They just got stomped out by the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. Um, and I know you said they can hang with the best offense. They didn't have T. Higgins in this one, so that matters. But they got stomped out nonetheless. Uh, at number three, as I said before, power of faith on their side. My Lord and Savior, Jameis Winston. Um, we've been calling for him to get that job for a very long time Ooh, now. And finally, yo. which is their first bro. Respect to Shmir. <laughs> Spike. Spike. Sorry, I had to. No, you're good. You're good. Spike and Cooge. Please, um, go Spike ahead. and Cooge is there. That's amazing. And Lil Mama Tadell. Nobody else. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, where, okay. Uh, Jameis Winston. Uh, Jameis Winston is... Already, he's already had one game, and it was better than any single Desha uh, Deshaun Watson performance that he has had in his years of being a Cleveland Brown now. Yep. So it's not even remotely close. Kevin Stefanski and the Browns went on a ridiculous run l last year with Joe Flacco. I can expect them to do something similar with maybe Jameis isn't Flacco. He's not. He could but be. he's a good vet quarterback that's been around for a while. Obviously had a whole offseason with this with this offense and said coming into the year, it was a sign from God to sign with the Cleveland Browns. And he said they're going to go on a crazy run for the remainder of this season. So I trust every word that Jameis Winston says. So yeah. I don't have the balls to put them higher. But they're number three, Cleveland Browns. And number two, it's the Pittsburgh Steelers. I would love to put them at one because, you know, Mike Tomlin's the GOAT. Um, but I can't put the Steelers above the Ravens. The Ravens are an absolute unit. Their offensive firepower is ridiculous. And the biggest difference between the two is the strength of schedule for the remainder of the year. Uh, that matters a ton, and the Ravens have an easier schedule from here on out. So, yeah, Ravens have won. Checks out. All right. All right. I yeeted the fuck out of you guys. Everything oh. I said before the show, I don't believe in. Oh. At number four, I have the Cincinnati Bengals. Like mm -hmm. you guys said, the defense sucks. In the game, oh, it's October. Joe Burrow in October, so cool. Joe Shiesty, they're supposed to win. They got stomped out by Jalen Hurts. I don't want to hear it no mm -hmm. more. I don't care that T. Higgins was out. They're embarrassing. It's done. It's cooked. At number three, a wise man once said, you only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. Jameis Winston, Eminem. Oh, I yeah. believe, just like you do, Matty J, he My is. Boy. You, the point is right there. Last year, once number four was gone, what happened? They went on a miraculous run. What happens when number four is gone this year? The first game. They have by far their best game of the season. Yep. It's not a coincidence that the guys play better when they're not playing for the devil. Yeah. At quarterback. True. It's not a coincidence. The players want to play. Tom, I know you mentioned the offensive line is bad. Maybe the offensive line was just bad because they were blocking for number four. Two things can be true at once. Also like so healthy like now, by the way. Also yes. had getting again, people maybe, back. Maybe they were just not that good because hey man, they were blocking so. for number four. So, again, this is his one shot. He's not going to miss his chance to blow. I believe in Jameis, just blow. like you, Matty J. Blow so much that the Browns are my number three team. At number two, like I said, I was bamboozling you guys before we started the show. At number two, I have the Baltimore Ravens. Because guess what? what? Just like the Bengals, their defense fucking sucks. Oh. Their defense sucks. It is not just not as good as last year. It fucking sucks. To let the Cleveland Browns do what they did to them is embarrassing for them. And believe it or not, Deontay Johnson is not going to make the defense better. The offense didn't need Deontay Johnson. Cool move. You got him for free. Makes them a better team. Cool. Does not fix their problem. So until they make a move on, on defense, I, I'm not sold on the Ravens as much as I was. This was this was a wake up call game for me as as a guy who was getting there on the Ravens, saying they were a Super Bowl contender, they could win the thing. This could be the year. A team that 
for the past decade was built on their defense. Their defense is atrocious. Their secondary fucking sucks. Marcus Williams, who's a veteran who's supposed to be one of their safeties holding it down, got fucking benched this weekend. Yep. The secondary stinks. Um, So, yeah. And at number one, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers. I believe. I believe this defense is far and away the best defense in the NFL, and it's really not close, and they have the best defensive player in all of football. Why is he the best defensive player in all of football? Because not only does he make plays, Miles Garrett makes plays. What? Michael Parsons makes plays. What? Max Crosby makes plays. What? What? That's his name. But he makes plays in the biggest moments. Every single time. TJ Watt. Every single time there is a big moment and the defense needs a play, somehow, some way, he's not just getting a sack. He's getting a strip sack and giving them the ball back. It's actually remarkable how clutch T.J. Watt is. It actually makes no sense. Mm. To be able to impact a game and to just completely swing a game on its head on that side of the ball, is it's literally unheard of. The sacks are cool and all, but the ability to force turnovers the way he does and strip the, the ball from the quarterback, it's literally unheard of. He's a, as big of a game changer as there is in the entire NFL, and like we mentioned before, the run game is getting going. Najee Harris with three straight 100-yard rushing games. We're seeing the Arthur Smith effect. And Russell Wilson is playing some motivated football right now. And this offensive scheme, it fits everything that, that makes Russ good. Playing out of the play action, taking some shots. And then I know, I know we mentioned, oh, they haven't played anyone. The schedule gets a little tough for them. The schedule is tough just because of the names. Because they play the Ravens twice. Because they play the Bengals twice. But like you said, Manny J, I think before we started recording, they own that division. Yep. They own that division. They're not going to sweep. They're not going to go six and zero in the division. But they're they're going to have a positive record within the divisional games. They are, and I know I think they have to play the Chiefs still, which they do. But the Chiefs are due to lose. Their non-division schedule for the remainder of the year is uh, the Commanders, uh, the Chiefs, and the Eagles. So. Commanders, Chiefs, and Eagles, and if they could tough. find a way to go two and one in those games, then they're winning the division. I, I that two would and, be inclined two one, yeah. to agree, but the Ravens have a couple teams that suck, like us, unfortunately. Yeah, but we've already the seen schedule. the Ravens could lose to teams that suck. They lost to the Raiders. They lost to the Cleveland Browns. The Ravens are vulnerable. The Ravens like, could lose to teams that. I don't suck. think the Browns suck anymore. But, sure. Yeah, but my point, my point being, we've seen the Ravens lose games they're supposed to win. You know what I mean? I don't know. I I believe. I think I'm sold on Russell Wilson. I think I like I said. I just think he fits everything they want to do. I know Justin Fields was playing some good ball, but for this team, Russell Wilson just makes too much sense. Like I said, playing out of the play action and just taking some goddamn shots to one of the best deep threats and contested ball catchers in the league in George Pickens. It just Makes too much sense. The Muth has been Luth. Najee Harris is having the best. Like, he's not just playing well. He's having the best year of his career to this point right now. Mm-hmm. Jalen Warren, even last night, it took a little while because he was dealing with injuries in the in the beginning of the season. But Jalen Warren looked freaking explosive last night, man. So, I'm here. I believe in the Pittsburgh Steelers. They are winning the AFC North. The pickle convinced me. Yeah. I like so my well. my one thing about the Ravens is through three quarters they are one of the best defenses in the NFL, and then come fourth quarter, whatever it is, that's yeah, a terrible just that it yeah. is, the, it collapses in the fourth quarter. It doesn't make any sense how you're so dominant for three quarters, and then in the fourth you just completely self self implode. Like it it makes zero sense. They it's almost as if the the offense sometimes builds a lead, and the defense just gets too comfortable and plays from there. So the defense is taking a page out of Anthony Richardson book. They're just tired, <laughs> and it's That's not it. even just. Much. I mean, Rufi said it in the dynasty chat today. It's not just that they lost some players on defense and that the players are playing like shit. They lost half their fucking defensive coaching staff. Yes, the defense was obviously going to get worse experience. this year. So, and again, until some look, if someone walks through that door, if they make a move at the deadline, like we could revisit the conversation, and I'll be willing to to flip the switch on it. But as things stand right now, given that they have a one-game lead, given the fact that historically they own this division and they specifically own the Baltimore Ravens, I- I'm going to ride with the Steelers, man. Yeah. I like That's it. Fair. Yeah. I so, with it. Did, I, did you guys see that coming? 
I bamboozled you guys, right? No, not really. You, <laughs> I don't know. You seem like a massive Steeler hater. Yeah, just I know. from like, like not even from before the pod. Like, no, just, I know. I you just, just seem like I, you would hate the Steelers. I'm so just it just all makes so much sense. This is what they've been lacking. Some creative play calling, getting the run. They were always a great defense. That solid just, offense. That just, that right, that just yeah. needed solid offense. That just needed to run the ball and be able to play out of play action. You have one of, if not the best offensive coordinator in terms of setting up a run scheme. You have Najee Harris playing motivated football, playing the best football of his life. And then you have Russell Wilson, who just makes so much sense operating and running this offense. It just, it all makes so much sense for them right now. It really does. I think so. I think that costume's getting to you, brother. Yeah. I think that costume <laughs> might be getting to you, brother. It's hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. What do you guys look at when he talks? I'm just curious. His nose. I'm it's looking, his nose, right? I'm, I'm looking, looking at the eyes. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. looking directly at the mouth, yeah, I'm, to be the honest. Corner of his I'm mouth centered right, right now. My mouth is what? where the mouth is. My oh. eyes are where the eyes are. Okay. Oh, nice. So I'm just looking at... And what's where the unibrow is? Rick's My forehead. Pull up shoes. <laughs> Flips. All right, Seems so... Fun. We just predicted the AFC North for the rest of the the rest of the season, and that's that's one division. But there's a whole lot more going on in this conference. No, the, yeah, this playoff picture is looking pretty wild. So <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I didn't even do that on purpose. That was good. I didn't even do that, that on purpose. Good. <laughs> I didn't even hear it. That was that was very good. I know this playoff wild pic- card. He said oh, it's shit. looking kind of wild. You yeah, know, I'm I'm building towards something. Yo, yeah, thank you. That's why he's a detective. Agent P, come on. Dooby dooby dooba dooby dooby dooba. So as I said, <laughs> this division, fuck, this playoff picture looks pretty wild. So, wow. what better thing to do than try and predict the wildness of the wildness? Oh fuck. How wild? Is this wild card? What do we think? <laughs> Fucking <laughs> wild, man. What the fuck? Yo, you this is wild. This is wild. Gonna be wild. Is wild. Is wild. Is wild. Oh, edge of my seat. Like, I I, I'm, this, That's is, the idea. this is good. That's the idea. This is good. So, this intro is running we wild, We are going brother. to predict the AFC wild card. Okay. Is what I was building towards. Wow. You want to so, bite? Can I go I'm, first? Yeah, yeah, bite sure. I'm going to pull up the playoff picture. Oh, so bite go pizza. ahead. Awesome. Okay. The pickles. So, my number five seed in the AFC, I think it's pretty clear here for all of us the number five seed is going to be whoever was number two in the AFC North for all of us I think we're all going to agree on that we'll see what happens when you guys go my number five is the Baltimore Ravens I think they're going to be a wild card team considering they aren't going to win the division they're a lock to make the playoffs. so at number five I have the Baltimore Ravens my number six seed in the AFC it's going to be the LA Chargers man wow I believe and Left field me and Matty J were talking about this on the AFC West Prediction Show with Jason. You guys told me I was crazy for saying the Chargers were going to be able to win some football games. Justin Herbert's playing some good football right now, man. You did. You said I said they did were going to win. Yes. I don't you, remember that. I said 8-9, eight, 9-8. Nine, nine eight. Bro, we got into a huge argument because I said they're going to win fucking eight games, and you said, no, they're winning seven. No. Chris, and we had to go through the I schedule. I promise you I had it at eight and nine. Then I had it at nine and eight, there whatever it was. There it was one game, and we yeah, had a probably. whole big argument. Whatever. That was hard. But Justin Herbert's playing some great football right now, and Lad McConkey's here, and he's here to stay. The conk. The cock. What? <laughs> well. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, but Lab McConkey finally had his big breakout game. He's here to stay. Justin Herbert's playing some motivated football. We know they're going to be able to run the ball. Obviously, it's fallen off a little bit these past few weeks. But, again, Justin Herbert's been able to pick up that slack because he's that good of a quarterback. And this defense, I tried to tell people, they have the right pieces. They just didn't have the right coaching. And boom. now they have the right coaching. Huh? I said boom. Oh. Boom. Yeah, now they have the right coaching. <laughs> so, I think they're... You know, I think they're going to be able to win some games, and I think they're going to be able to sneak in. And I'm sure you guys saw this coming. My last wild card team in the AFC, he's on the wall. And I'm not talking about the Hawk. I'm talking about the Tua. Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> oh. I'm talking about the Tua. The Dolphins are going to flip the script. And mm. like Matty J was saying last week about the Jets, it was do or die against the Patriots for the Jets. This week for the Miami Dolphins in Buffalo against the Buffalo Bills, this is the season right here. 
<laughs> this yeah, is the season. Gone. This is the fucking season, <laughs> and gone. I'm believing in my boys. They are winning this fucking game. Tua is flipping the script. After the big old concussion, he's going to walk into Buffalo, and he's <clears> going to dick them down, leading to a miraculous run of the Miami Dolphins sneaking into the playoffs. Would you say that the Dolphins are going to walk in their trap and take over oh, their yeah, trap? Oh, yeah, they're taking that shit over. Yeah? Yes. I just would love to bet on that one. Mm, nah. <laughs> All right, yeah, $10? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. see, I'm not no bitch. $10, $10. $10. $10. $10. Yeah, but like, it's different. It's a completely different bet. Um, I think right. the Miami game to win was against Arizona. Not gonna yes, lie. it was. I it think one hundred percent was. You like that first game? You come yeah, back with yeah, one hundred percent. No, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm this. I don't even give a but fuck. Given about the the la- finished. Yeah, yeah, but I, given yeah, yeah. given the landscape of the AFC right now, like it's not over yet. It, no, it's you're right. Not it's not over, over. But they they have to like if they, they have, if yeah. they lose this week, it's over for sure. But like, it's the same situation the Jets were in last week. You need to come close. You don't need to win out, but you gotta be like close. Yeah, you gotta be pretty. You gotta be close to perfect. You can maybe afford two losses. Two losses at most. Yeah, two losses at most is is all you can afford right now. That's eight and two for the remainder of the year. In that AFC though, the AFC is like is just not good football unless you're like the top two teams in your in your uh, division. The AFC really isn't a great football conference. Mm. That's the thing. And yeah, but the thing is, like, the Colts could start winning some games. The Colts with no could more win, Anthony yeah. Richardson. I, do, I really don't believe the Chargers are going anywhere. The Broncos can mess around and Wait, keep what? Wait, excuse me? You just said the Chargers were going to be? I don't believe they're going anywhere in terms of the playoff oh, picture. Oh, oh, they're oh, they're oh, in oh, the oh, playoffs. I was, I was like, wait a yeah, second. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're not going anywhere in terms of that being in the race. That was foolery. That's what that was. No, 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 no. I knew what I was saying. Tom understood, right? Yeah. No, I got it. Yeah, they're not going anywhere in terms of being in the race. The Broncos could keep winning games, so, like, yeah, the Dolphins have to pretty much not win out, but two losses at most. Maybe they could sneak in with three three losses from here on out, but they'd need everyone. It'd be one of those where the Dolphins need need to win, and this team to lose, this team to lose, this team to lose, this team to lose, this team to lose. So, Chris, I I don't, I don't care wanna, about the yeah, fucking schedule. schedule. I don't, I don't, I don't want to burst the I bubble. Do. I bro. know what the schedule is. I don't give a fuck, bro. What's Tua the is flipping the script, bro. All right, I don't fucking care. So this week he said at it's at Bills. It's you it's lost. in Buffalo you now. Lost that game. Yes, right. At Rams, who are hot now. You lost that game. Raiders. You win that game. W. Patriots. You could win that game. You no, could you, also you lose win that, that game. game. You could also lose that They're game. They're not though. the Jets. You, no, you could also. Wait, They're is, not the Jets. Is it in the Patriots? Is it in Foxborough? Right? They're home. Miami's home. Can run. Miami's home. All right, you win that game. Never mind. Ah. At the Packers. You lose that game. Home What's against the Jets. You win that game. At the Texans. Mm. You lose that game. <laughs> Home against the Niners. You lose that game. Niners <laughs> suck. At the Browns. Browns uh, suck. Where'd you, you have the game. Browns rank? Third. Third. You lose that game. <laughs> <laughs> and at the Jets. Mm. You win that game again. The because hardest that game, game, is, that at, game is not going to matter. The hardest game out of all of these is the is Jets. The, you could say no, it. No, it's the Bills. It's this, this week. week. Yeah. Yeah. So if and win, if, yeah. if if they beat the Bills this week, then the hardest game is the Pack. I I think we're gonna at the lose. Texans. No, I'm I think it's at Rams. I'm more, yeah, I'm more scared Packers. with Tua's track record. I'm more scared of playing in Lambo. Green Bay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we lose. It's chilly in over Green there in Green Bay. But like, a little bit. Bro, these are no like, wonder. let's like these are all winnable games. They are definitely like, winnable It's not games. like we're they playing are. the fucking Chiefs, the yeah. Lions. We're not playing the juggernauts of the juggernauts. The Texans are the fakest six and two team of all time history right now. <laughs> no, but My, I, I'm not. We need a miraculous run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, going seven and three with this schedule is hard. Yeah. It's fucking hard. Yes, but yeah. like I said seven at the beginning of the does year, not make you in the playoffs. And I, did, I wasn't days. expecting a concussion, but I said in the beginning of the year, this is the year where the Dolphins may start slow, but finish strong and mm. flip the entire script. And they did a great job of starting they slow. The they did a great job of starting slow. So let's finish strong, Hawk Tua. Hell yeah. All right, so I'll just piggyback off that because um, obviously I was just having that conversation with Chris. I am going to have the, – there it goes. The fifth-seeded Steelers, uh, I, I think the Steelers, as you said, whoever doesn't make it in first place for the AFC North, I think that's the first wild card spot. The oh, – man, Bo Nix looked great this Bo week. Nix is Granted, awesome. Panthers, but, like, but no, Bo, Nix Bo Nix is, is not good. awesome. Bo Nix is yeah, not Bo Nix awesome. Is cool. He's – He's cool. I like him. He's all right. 
I, don't I think like it haircut. gets better as the season goes on. Yeah. Defense is good. Defense is awesome. Real good. Yeah. With that being said, I'm going to have the six seeded Colts. Oh, wow. Joe Flacco is going on a run. Okay. Joe like Flacco that. is going on a run with the Colts now. And then the seventh seed is the toss up of the two AFC West teams. And that is the Broncos and the Chargers. Okay. I trust Justin Herbert more than I trust Bo Nix. I'm going to go with the Chargers. I, the yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't blame you. The experience is there with, uh, with Justin Herbert, even though he fumbled last year against Jacksonville. But I think with Jim Harbo in that, I, I do like the Chargers in there. I do. So five Steelers, six Colts, and seven Chargers. Yeah. So I'll piggyback off of your piggyback. Um, oh. This is quite a piggyback thing we got going on here. It's the human centipede. Be pretty. Okay. <laughs> Um, my five seed is also the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I've talked about them a lot before, but they've got an elite defense. The offense is getting going. They're going to be in a playoff pick in the playoff. They're going to be in the playoffs, and they're going to pull off an upset probably. Um, yeah, Matty J. Completely agree. My six seed is the Indianapolis Colts. I think they're a good football team, and now that Joe Flacco's in there, I think that offense is going to be very good. The defense is defense is still questionable, mm -hmm. but I think Flacco and the boys they're going to do enough. To get it done, they're gonna light. Now that they know that they have Flacco, rest of season, it's gonna light a fire under them. They're gonna want to play better, and they're gonna play better, and, and they're gonna win like some an football games. Too. Hell yeah! yeah oh my Come god! On. Um, with a quarterback who can actually run an offense, right? Yeah, and he doesn't get tired either. Nope, he, he ain't gonna tired. tap he out. He hasn't yeah. getting tired. He ain't gonna tap twenty out. goddamn years. All right, he's thirty nine. Yeah, he ain't getting union. tired. Nope, that guy's that guy's union. He's, he's that's union, baby. Cool. That's Paisan energy yeah. going he in there under, under energy. center over there. All right, <laughs> here he goes. He's putting the jersey back on. <laughs> he tapped out. You can't I'm surprised. Chris, what are we talking I'm about? I'm disappointed that you Come didn't on, go man. in. Little and do they know. They didn't even know that that's not Chris. He didn't. What, somebody <laughs> completely different. It's actually that. Jason Pickles. Oh, um, shit. <laughs> Pickle on pickle. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, st I'm actually sad that you didn't commit to the bit and go, you know, take care of business with the. Well, he was dying under there. With the pickle suit on, so. Yeah, I don't think Wait, he's what? listening to us at all. Yeah, he didn't yeah. handle. You didn't handle business with he the pickle suit on. With the suit on. Yeah. Yep. No, the whole point of getting up was to take the suit off for a minute. Yeah, he tapped oh, out. Sorry. Okay, fair. Um, exactly. Bro, Anthony Richardson. Here, bro, bro, <laughs> bro, he was running a lot. Like uh, he's tired. Come on, he's, man. he's tired. <laughs> You run a podcast. Yeah, I mean, it's, come it's on. Carries. You get tired. You sleep down. What's wrong with you? Um, my last spot is where I'm gonna have to disagree with you. I have the Denver Broncos making the playoffs. It's not so much a Bo Nix versus Justin Herbert thing. This defense is damn good, and I think they're gonna keep it up. And Bo Nix is playing some good football. That definitely has something to do with it. I just think I don't know if I if I see anything like elite about the Chargers. I think Justin Herbert is a great quarterback, but I th I think the defense for the Denver Broncos is elite. It's been one of the best in football over the past few weeks. Facts. I'm going to... Oh my god, Kyrie's cooking right now. Is he? Yeah. Let's go. What's the score? Allow me to go back at you real quick. Go ahead. Chargers defense has been just as good, if not better. The Chargers defense should be really good, though. It has been. I know, I know. But, like, it should be, like, much better than the Broncos. I think these two teams are actually so them. painfully yeah. similar. Yeah, like yeah. disgustingly similar, honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just one of them has Justin Herbert and the other one has Bo Nix. Yeah. That's why. That's why I leaned the Chargers. But shit, but Bo Nix is doing a good job doing what he, he has is. to he's do. He's taking right care now. of business. You yeah, know? and he finally had a big breakout game. He's yeah. just good fake Justin but, Herbert. Like that's really what he is. He's like a he's a fake Justin Drew Herbert. Brees. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. In the Sean Payton, that. but it's that's that's who Sean Payton wanted. He wanted the. I guess shitty Walmart version. version. Of the real Brees. Not even Walmart. Walmart's okay. Like Target. Not even Target. Target's okay. So Denver. I'm just um, what's a really bad store? Telco. CVS. Um, Tel Telco's a good one, actually. Well, we can forget about CVS sponsorships <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, but, no, I think I think they are very similar. I just I like what I've I like what I'm seeing out of the Broncos, man. I think Bo Nix is getting better as the season goes on. And I think he can do enough and really light a fire under that squad. Yeah, no, I uh, I definitely love the way you went through that. Um, as for me, um, I went at number five. <laughs> oh, I was looking up. Just the, no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even he see didn't that. like the list. He just liked the way I went through it. Like, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, what, yeah. that's what yeah, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. Like, that's what. No, because everything Tom said, like he backed it up. You know what I mean? He probably oh, yeah. backed it up. Pause. Better points, than I. Man, I'm looking at the standings. He I don't said know what the records are. He said he loved the way you went through it, and then said that I you backed it up. I mean. Pause. So, yo, so I was, I was throwing it over there. Look, honestly, I am very comfortable. They'll uh, see that eventually. Putting the Ravens at five, um, 
you know, we kind of talked a lot about the Ravens already. Uh, I don't think they're a top four, but I think they fit perfectly at five on this list. So sure. um, moving at six, I am going to have to put the Broncos below the Ravens. Mm. I know we just talked hot, steamy, wet dog shit about how the, uh, yeah, pause, uh, how the Ravens, you know, weren't. That's not a pause. No, it wasn't a pause. I just People felt like, like pausing. Uh, on pause. <laughs> yeah, so. Resume. Yeah, resume. Uh, so. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like I know we're just talking hot steamy shit about how the Ravens defense was was whack. And I even said it myself that they let up a lot of points and whatnot. But I do think they are a better team than the Broncos um, for a multitude of reasons. Um, now, right under the Broncos, I would go into why I think that with the Broncos, but I think more interesting you guys are going to like mm. that. I have the Colts at seven sneaking their way in. Shit, there. Man. Hell yeah. That's what's up. I know there's been a lot of figuring out. And I think after what happened this weekend, they they know the way they're going to finish off this season. And it's with Joe Flacco. And Joe Flacco is going to come through, and he's going to get the Indianapolis Colts into the playoffs. Yeah. And Hell yeah, I would love to see them go as far as possible, but unfortunately um, – I don't think they're gonna. Yeah, you can stop there. It's okay. Uh, yeah, that's just gonna be like you're fucking good. stop. You could have just said the Colts make the playoffs. Say they're gonna win a playoff game. I just say it I, live right now. They're gonna win. They're not winning. The playoffs. Nah, I don't know if they're gonna win, but I hope they make it. And um, yeah, with that being said, I'm very, very comfortable with that at five, six, and seven. All right. Did Clemmy go yet? No. Clemmy. Yeah. Oh, so my God. Off. What happened? Luca just hit one from basically the logo to ice the game, and he's talking Play. so much shit. Logo, Luca. Yeah. Oh my God. I love them, bro. He the, changed the Mavericks. Them. Yeah, bro. I'm a Mavs yeah, yeah. fan. Chris is the biggest Mav fan of all time, actually. actually yeah. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Like the Mavericks for like a solid time? like year. What? <laughs> bro, I've been a Mavs fan since we started this podcast. Dante DiVincenzo's been two years. He only hit one three. Yeah, he's dog shit. That Dead part. to me. All right, come give you a. Give uh, you a so list. five, yeah, second in the AFC North. It's it's no surprise. The AFC North is the best division in football, honestly. If it's not the NFC North in the AFC, uh, I'm sorry. I was about to in say. the AFC, in the AFC, I'm sorry. No, I definitely don't. I definitely um, it's second in the AFC North, so it's gonna be who do I have as second? The Bengals. I had the Bengals at second. That's so disgusting. I think I'm gonna Pretty switch gross. it to the Steelers. I, oh. The pickle actually <laughs> right. like the he's no longer standing me, on business. Yeah, yeah. The, no, the pickle like made me understand that like the the Steelers are a great football team. It tickled Good you. Job, pickle. It, the, the, Pickle tickled me. I'll say it. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, five is the Steelers because they're finishing second in the division. Six. I also really do like what Pete said about the Colts. Mm. Uh, the Colts. I like. Fuck I just like. Yeah. Colts. But what the fuck? Yeah. Fuck what we said. Where did we don't matter. We both had the Colts. Actually, higher than Pete. Higher than Pete did. <laughs> yep. Wow. In the same spot. You're you gonna write this them. down. I don't remember what half you. You guys. You guys were talking. <laughs> professional <laughs> yappers. <laughs> professional yappers. <laughs> My goodness. There it is. That's nasty. Wow. Um, yeah, uh, the Colts at six. Um, and then seven. The AFC North is the best in the AFC, right? Yep. You would say? Sure. I have the Bengals finishing with the final wild card mm. spot. I think I, for the first – I don't know if it's for the first time. I know it was like a top a couple years ago when they were all great. Um, the AFC North is going to have three teams in the playoffs. Didn't they have three in the They last had three year? last yeah. year. Yeah, yeah three last year. Yeah, but them Bengals. So yeah, because but uh yeah, I'm five five six. What did I say? It was the Steelers, the Colts, and then the Bengals. I do like I like the Broncos too. Um, I don't think that Bo Nix's inexperience leads them as far as they want to, and as far as they will in the future. Um, so I think they fall just out. I'm not gonna lie. So you had the Colts. You had the Colts. Did you have the Colts? No. No. Wow, how You're the tables have pickle? turned. Yeah. I know, bro. Nobody was rooting for the Colts harder than you were at the end of last season. I know. Even this year, I was yeah. very high on them. I just... Colts are far. The way... I mean, you have to have one of the AFC North teams in there. Yeah. Two I truly, truly, truly do believe the Chargers are going to get in. And mm. how the hell am I not going to have the Dolphins in there? You know Fair enough, I mean? yeah. Just I have the, I'd have the Colts right out. I'm, so if I had, you know, what I mean, if you had to be realistic about who makes the playoffs, the, two the Colts fans. have a better shot. No shot. Yeah, yeah. The two no, Jeff fans, no hell? shot. It's over. Absolutely well, not. It's over. For I don't the even Jets, want right? them to make the playoffs. Right, bro. Uh, they uh, might so? trade Devontae after trading for him. Yeah, I, I. No, I'm firmly in. Like I'm, they're Jeff fans. I'm no, I, I was love, the Jet guy too last yeah, week. Yeah. I would love for them to just lose the rest of the season. Yeah. And just you have a great quarterback. I will touch. I guess quick. They have a great quarterback class this year. Just nah. get, no, it is. 
It is. Well, I mean, I, I disagree with that statement. You don't it's like Cam cool. Ward, though. Yo. You don't like Cam Ward? I do like Cam Ward. So you don't like Cam Ward. Yo, Clem just hooked I feel it up with the transition, though. Cam Ward is very uh, oh. Oh, hit or miss. Depends on who he ends up so with. So Cam Ward, I think, in a... In a you uh, just see pretty plays and you think he's fucking sick. He's, he's awesome. He watches the entire game. He watches every, every... He's going number every one Every Miami game. He knows game. ball. Yo, he did, he did some crazy shit while we were pre-gaming the other day. Did I point that out to you, Tom? Or maybe to Gallo? I don't know. But Cam Ward did... He just... He's so nonchalant, bro. Oh, yeah, it's where yeah, he ends yeah. up. It's where he ends he's up. He's so uh, nonchalant, bro. I mean, it's I don't think he's QB1 ball. in the class, but... No, he's. I don't think he's QB1 either. Shador Sanders. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, okay. That, that, it's not the same, though. But continue. Yeah, no, I just gotta wait. Yeah, um, just lose out and just dra draft one of the quarterbacks and uh, just be good. You have you have the rookies yo, still on their rookie deals. What are we talking about right now? What? We were talking <laughs> about the Jets. I'm not gonna lie. Just that's it, that. Pete. Sit, that no. Yeah, what's his no. We don't talk about the Jets on this podcast. Sour pickle. Bro. Right, I'm sorry. I just want sour I know, pickles. I know. I'm sorry, sour but pickle. we just, uh, um, no, we don't do that no more. No, Chris, well, yeah, yeah. you know what? I Chris think, sick of the Jets. I, I don't blame him. We after, did not talk about the Jets at all today. We kind of kept it. talking about what I would consider the boring AFC, um, I'm excited to talk about ranking. We're going we're gonna to get this on one shot, all right? We're, we're going to be predicting the three NFC wildcard teams. All right. Is that correct? I don't know. Nailed it. Like, yes. the NFC <laughs> he's, looking, uh, got, he's looking at me like I'm supposed to know what's going on. <laughs> we're going to be... Okay. We're the one guy who's not <laughs> on the pod. <laughs> Nick, timestamp a cutout for this gang fucked that up four times. In. That's staying right there. Pause. Was that, your, was that your first one? You could pause anything. I know. You uh, pause everything, though. It's all right. My bad. I ain't pulling out. We're going to be right. predicting the NFC wildcard teams. So... Kick it off. At number five, personally, I am very comfortable with putting the Vikings there. Yo, you're so comfortable, bro. I mm. am so Everything comfortable. You, you don't look comfortable, it's though. It's that pizza cool, costume. calm, and collected. Just Always like comfortable. Pizza, look, if you're, looking at, the oven with if you're looking at the teams above the Vikings right now, um, we got the, like, right now, as of right week now. eight into the season, we got the Lions at one, which makes total sense. Commanders at two. Falcons at three. The Cardinals at four. I would say the Vikings fit perfectly at five. Um, I because I do it. It, it kind of actually gets a little iffy with the Cardinals there, um, but um, we're definitely going to put the Vikings at five. Moving at number six, um, I'm going to have to put the Eagles there. Um, yes, I'm putting the Vikings over the Eagles. <laughs> yes, I'm putting the Vikings over the Eagles um, for a multitude of reasons. Uh, for one thing, I don't feel like um, the Eagles. I feel I don't honestly. The Vi no, you don't agree? It's okay. We'll talk about it. We'll uh, rebuttal. Let's give the list and then rebuttal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he's pausing. Oh, know. He's, he's, holding, he's holding the rebuttal. Shut over there. Look, you know? the Eagles look very, very good. They're, they're, they're pushing. Shut up, John. <laughs> <laughs> they're pushing that tush into the red zone, and they are winning games. I can't I can't see anything. I just hear something here. That's it. You just see. You're just, see. The microphone is floating. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Look, I do think that the Eagles... Um, you know, overall do finish at six. And then at seven, um, I'm going to have to put the Cardinals. The Cardinals right now, they are ranked the number four. Um, like, actually on the in the hunt for the wild. What? what? The no, no, no. no we'll, rebuttal. we'll rebuttal after. No, like, right now, like, on NFL.com, like, it's Lions, Commanders, yeah. Falcons, and Cardinals. I don't think the Cardinals should be at four. It's, um, I don't think it is the Cardinals. Oh, no, no four, four and four. Are in first four in and division. four, yeah. Yeah, no. and it, like... And like so for that reason, two in the division. That's why I feel like they should be put at seven, like especially for the long haul of the season. Did you so? Um, who do you think is gonna win that division? The yeah. Niners. The whole division. Who's the, going at four? Yeah. Who's going at four? Because that who's is the, the four that's seed. Because the, the four seed yeah, is going NFC to be West. the N winner of the yeah. NFC West. Yeah. All right. So then you have to go the Niners. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So 100%. Niners. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Not the wrong. Can't argue that. Give me some sauce. Yeah. Uh, I'll. Tom's gonna piggyback. I think. Yo, I actually yo, don't think Tom yo. is going to piggyback at all. Um, oh, no, okay. <laughs> no, I mean, at the five spot, I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers. I mean, been on the Packers since since before the season. I know a lot of people have high hopes for them. Yeah. Don't think they're going to climb up there and take that division, but I think they'll be right in there and not be a team you want to see in the wild card mm -hmm. round. Jordan Love and the boys getting going. And even if Jordan Love ain't out there, Malik Willis is just a really good quarterback now. So, you know, there's that too. But – uh, this defense has gotten better as the season get goes on. I've I said that last week, and uh, I see no reason why that won't continue. Um, staying in that division, 
yeah, staying in that division. Um, at number six, I'm going to go with the Minnesota Vikings. I know they just lost Christian Derisaw for the, for the season. and Traded for Cam Robinson. Traded, yeah. Traded for Cam Robinson. I mean, not the best, but solid replacement. He does. You know, so um, great move by them. And they just always seem to have a great – they just seem to have the great offensive line. So, um, you know, they're getting TJ Hawkinson back in the lineup. The defense Don't is what, need him. They don't need him. Um, and listen, what if Matty Ice comes there? That'd be that'd be insane. But Matt Ryan is coming to the the other guy, yeah, the, the other Vikings. Ice. Come on, the other Matty Ice. You fucking suck. Um, That's that. But I'm gonna project uh, and assume, and just with the Vikings the way they are now, I still think they're gonna make it into the playoffs. And tough Brian Flores defense in the playoffs. Another wild card team you don't want to see. And at number seven, hmm. This is tough because there are – wow, this is really hard, actually. The NFC um, is, is – yeah, it's, it's tough. It's low-key kind of yeah. stacked. Like The what? AFC is only tough because everybody sucks. Yes. Right. Yeah. So you could have a losing team, like, in the playoffs, Man. honestly. So, like, I don't think the Cardinals are going to win the division. I think pretty much everyone's going to say the Niners are going to win that division. What? Are you sure? Are no, you like I'm not. Like actually, like I'm I don't really think everyone's going to say the Niners really are going to win the division. I, like I don't think I'm going to say the Niners are going to win the division. Um, so who is? I'm fucking know. Um, but my last wild card spot, man. I know they just lost two big pieces, but I'm rocking with my guy Baker Mayfield. I think the Tampa oh, Bay shit. Buccaneers are getting into the playoffs. I can't put the Eagles in there. I just, I know that like on paper they're talented, but I just don't think they're a great football team i don't think they're a cohesive unit and i think the wheels are going to fall off i don't think they're going to you know they they went on a, how, how many games did they lose in a row last year they were 11 like and 0 seven yeah, yeah they start you know or we've seen seven, them like six five, start six. off super Eagles? hot yeah dog shit yeah they we've seen what? them start off super hot and Can, lost be a bunch better. of games in a row should be better and they haven't started off super hot they started off looking like shit and i think it's going to continue yeah, i don't believe in downfall i don't believe in the eagles year. Fuck the Eagles. So you wait, wait, wait. That yeah, was so your seven seed. Again? Please, please, re- yes. yeah. Um, just the list, not the rest. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. Shut the fuck up and just say the three teams: <laughs> Packers, Vikings, Buccaneers. Dog shit, dog shit, dog shit. Yeah, pretty much. Nah, the top two are fire. Okay, but yeah, watch. I let's watch. I think the Buccaneers win the NFC South. I do. Whoa. I, yeah, literally. Hell we got yeah. some opinions flying yeah, out right yeah. now. No, the Buccaneers win the NFC South. I'm trying to. The NFC South is the. It, it's just such a mid conference. It's like it used to be. It, that used to be the division. NFC East. That, that used to be the NFC East where it was like they were just so bad, but now the. the uh, Bro, fuck. there's no way the Falcons don't win that division. The Falcons are winning that no. division. No, but they're 4 0 in the division right now. No, no, no. Coming they're down winning to the division. Nah. He's not hearing it. The Bucs. <laughs> I don't know what you guys don't, don't get. have either of their receivers <laughs> right now. Matter. They'll get him back. It's fine. They can't get Godwin back. I don't need Godwin. They'll get the other one. Mike Bro, I'll put $500 right now. Come on. <laughs> Falcons win the division. Pickles don't have money, so I don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't have money. <laughs> so they got I juice. Think, I think the five is the Falcons. I'll give you 500 gallons of juice. <laughs> <laughs> 500 gallons? Give you 500 pickles. Five gallons. Name 10 books. Um, I'll give you 500 books. Sorry, Falcons. Falcons are the five. Um, only because the Bucks win. Right. That's <laughs> what all. is going the Bucks on? Bucks win the NFC South. What is their Let record? Me. Listen, listen, listen. I have it out four and four. The same as the Falcons. No, that's not what I'm saying. Like oh. end of the season. Oh, it's got to be like five three. nine and something. But now we're the Falcons, the five seed. Because the NFC sucks. What you just said? The what? NFC's oh, I did say the NFC is loaded. I'm sorry. All right. Let me let me think. All right, just back. say your list. Just say the five through seven. All right, the five through seven is Atlanta, okay, and then Green Bay, mm-hmm. and then Minnesota. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I like it. It's hot. I like it. It's hot. You're hot. I, thank you. You're hot, <laughs> John. Anyway, um, John. <laughs> yeah. But you can't see me. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna piggyback off that <laughs> shit. I don't think too much is gonna change based on where we're at right now. So. At number five, I think the Packers stay right where they are at number five. I just think the six and seven flip flop. I think the the Eagles get up to number six and the Vikings get in its last wild card team at number seven. Um, just to make some points, I love to hate on the Eagles, Tom. You know I do. Yeah, I gotta the give them their flowers. So <gasps> they're playing some good ball since the bye. Their their defense has been lights out, and that was 
you know, all right, you beat the Giants last week, big whoop. But mm-hmm. that that game against the Bengals, you know, pretty much stomping them out the way they did was was pretty telling. Jalen Hurts is again. I love to say Jalen Hurts sucks. Since the bye, he's playing some damn good ball right now. And you know, if that that defense keeps up at the pace they, they're at right now, I think they're a playoff lock. So, I would, I'd love to hate on the Eagles, but got to give them their dandelions and tulips. Sure. Yeah, so I'm glad you said all that because I was actually going to say, I know you two were just hating on the Eagles. The Eagles have been phenomenal since the bye, as you just stated. Uh, And also they got two coordinators, two new coordinators this year. So a lot of this stuff was going to take a little while. And I mean, Kellen Moore and... uh, who is it Vic Fangio? Yeah. It's Vic yeah. Fangio for the for the for the defense and doing a hell of a job. I personally don't even think they're gonna be in the wild card because I think they're gonna run away with this division in due time. Oh, like boo-hoo. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Oh, you think the no. Eagles sorry. are gonna run away with the NFC? Yes, bro. The, the Eagles have run the away. magic on their side, bro. They have the magic on their side, bro. I don't care about a stupid Hail Mary, bro. bro. No, that was before the Hail that Mary. That was one of the most legendary things I've ever seen, by the way. Yeah. Um but Tyreek Stevenson, Jalen what a, what what a guy. Tyreek, what a guy. What? Jalen Hurts couldn't throw it that far. If he tried. Does, doesn't he would, he would have thrown it to the other team. Yeah, sure. that's it okay. doesn't, he, yeah. yeah, but the thing is, he hasn't been. So it doesn't matter. Eagles are better than the Commanders. They are much better football team than the Commanders because that defense is so superior. Yo, the and Commanders defense is playing good it has football. Been defense is good. Better, yeah. It has been playing good, good football, <laughs> but it's been playing good football against teams that aren't good. That's the problem. So I don't really care too much. I'm not moved until they play good brother, defense against brother, the team. The Eagles beat the Bengals and the Giants. Yeah. The Eagles are a better football team. And to be right, fair, the Bears were bad. on a roll. Until you made it sound they... like the Eagles are beating good teams. They beat since the bye. They've beaten the Browns, Giants, and Bengals. Yes, but their Barely defense the in this past right. the their defense against a great offense this past week looked great. Yeah, but to be Which fair, the saying. Bears' offense was on a fucking roll going into this game right. this past weekend. Yeah, the Bears. Commanders' defense shut that shut them the fuck out. Mm-hmm. Shut but them also, out. What was and I, what was I'm not. Play? It was bad, yeah, and I, I, a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. That's another issue. Like the Bears, the yeah. Bears' issues are another thing. But yes, and their play they, calling sucks. Yeah, uh, I 100 percent yeah. agree. But to be fair, they were they were on a fucking roll, and the Commanders' defense shut that shit up. So. Um, so, the same way we're going to give the Eagles flowers for their defense getting better as the season's gone on, the Commanders' defense has literally gotten better week after week. I Didn't think the Eagles Darius Slay. I think the Commanders. I think the Commanders' How defense is. I, I don't think it's long. It's not long. I don't think it's. Long. I thought it was. Some, if, I thought it was. Is some, he out? I I know he came out. I don't remember. <laughs> On, Thanks, Clem. Come on. Come I don't think he's out at all. I don't. I don't think he's missing he's a game. Someone look it up. Sh- he's questionable. Okay. All right. Questionable. Right, he, might a game. A game he might miss a game. He might miss a game. What a yeah. groin. He groins? might miss a game. Groins are complicated, man. Right. You don't want to hurt your groin. All right. Um. <laughs> uh, I didn't even give my teams, but that's sick. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> five, six, seven. Good. Uh, so at number five, I have the Green Bay Packers. I've been on them all off season. I've been on them this season. I love them. I think they're a great football team. At number six, uh, staying in that same division, I have the Minnesota Vikings. The schedule gets pretty light from here, uh, and you know Cam Robinson. The trade for him, you know, keeps that left tackle position somewhat stable. And that matters. And it's a good thing that they made a win now move to try to patch that up. And my last team will be the Washington Commanders. I think that's pretty simple for me. It's not that I think they fall off. I just don't think they win the division. And I don't think they're sorry. The Green Bay Packers. Okay. The uh Minnesota Vikings and the Washington Commanders. But what about what happened to the Seahawks? The Seahawks ain't making it. But you said this. No, that was the Eagles. Uh, no, I know, but oh. a few weeks ago when I was trying to say the Commanders are making the playoffs, you said no, the Seahawks are a better football mm. team. Well, Commanders. I thought they were a better football team at the but time. But they're not. I've been proven wrong. You Let's go. Did, right? You know who else isn't a better football team? Who? The Eagles. Yeah, you're just that's just you're talking out your ass. Now. How about the Cowboys? Though? You said the Cowboys now. for. Cowboys are definitely not Come on. a better football team. Pull up the tape. Definitely not. Can we got no, a no, no, formal apology gotta, to the Commanders. You don't got to pull up the tape. I'm sorry, sorry, Washington. I'm sorry to the Washington Commanders, the Washington football team, the Washington whatever you want to call yourselves. But I'm very sorry. I apologize. They are a good football team. They are a good football I'm team. Not a team that should be respected. We appreciate that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, but uh, I was gonna wear my Sam Howell jersey on the pod today. Oh, before we decided on get a Jaden Daniels jersey, brother. I, I got it. We, need, get we a gotta Sam get that. Hartman jersey. That's but I want. I'll also give a quick bonus thing since some of us were talking NFC West. 
I don't think the Niners win the division. I don't think the Seahawks win the division. They're healthy, they're back, and they got the best quarterback in the division. It's the Rams. The Rams are going to win the NFC West. I said that coming into the season. I agree. I'm with you. I said that coming into the season. I didn't feel great about the Niners. I said they'd make the playoffs. I don't think they make the playoffs, period. Come on, man. Um, We're good with these predictions. What did I say a few weeks ago? And I think I quote, the San Francisco 49ers have a 0% chance of winning the Super Bowl is what I said. Yeah. Fuck the 49ers. Fuck the 49ers. Yeah. Ramily, baby. Let's Fuck freaking ride, Ramily. Not horns up. I don't like Texas. No, it's um, Ram horns, but it's, right? it's Ram horns, baby. The Rams are 3 and 4. You got to like hook them, I guess, a little bit. Like, that's, that's, the that's the Rams. That's the Rams. The Rams are cursed. That's also a good one, yeah. So I think the Rams win the. Oh, Austin Wells is hitting the shit out He's the ball tonight, bro. The hitting ah, the shit really. out the ball tonight. Um, yeah, so the Rams are the NFC West. So cool. Good things, man. I agree. That's uh, fine. Yeah. And you you don't like the Cardinals enough to squeeze in there? No. I don't like the Cardinals, Cardinals are enough. So streaky. But there is yeah, one I, thing I, there is one thing about the Cardinals. They have a Heisman winning quarterback. So I ask one thing. I, I want us to give our top three of the Heisman voting so far. The Heisman voting. I want us to rank our top three Heisman candidates to this point in the college football season. I think this is a this is going to be an interesting one. There's a couple different names we could throw out there. For me personally, I think there is a pretty clear top three, and I'll get this thing started. At number one, I've been going back and forth no, all start day. Number three. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, you're right. Nick, you want to hop in for this one? You can take my spot. I feel spot. like you have a lot to say Nick on this. Yeah, Nick does gonna, have a lot to say about this. I was going to let you take my spot, but... No, definitely take my spot. I got to think Nick has better things to say than me. Okay. Nick does have a lot to say about this. I know, spot. yeah, this is his topic. Me and him might actually get in a beef right now. It's fine. Jesus. Oh Good God, Lord, please. brother. Is this still working? Yeah, it's still working. But, Nick, oh. you've been... Rev- yeah, you've been on camera before, so... You got this, Nick? This is my debut. Let's go, producer debut. Nick. Like, you've been on the ca- producer cam. Yeah, yeah but that's man. not the same. This is the, the man, man. Who, the couch, man who holds You've it down on the for couch? us. Welcome to the couch, up, baby. Thank you. That's this up. right here is the man who holds it down for us behind the behind Thanks. the scenes. Um, he's the best. He's the goat. There's a little Nick right here. You see what happens when okay. I when I'm not when I'm producing the show and you guys don't listen to me. You guys don't you, guys don't, you don't understand chat how this bothers me about <laughs> chat. Chat. <laughs> chat. Little Nick came to the crazy. Halloween party yeah, dressed as little Nick. Yeah. No, I'm actually dressed as I'm dressed as Central C right now. So I got this thing started uh, with my Heisman candidates at number three. I'm going to put your boy, Nick. I'm going to put your boy at number three. Cam Ward. Cam Ward, as opposed to a lot of the quarterbacks in college football right now, they are undefeated at the current moment. And that matters. And then also Miami's defense is dog shit. So all the games that they're winning, they're winning in shootouts. And not only but is how he, many have they lost? I just said they're undefeated. Okay. He's just making he just sure. Want, yeah, he just, just wants that you know more. You know because oh, oh, oh <laughs> producer Nick. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> you gotta leave that in there, bro. Come on, man. I thought I thought you were the, the hey, fucking yo. microphone guru producer over Nick, here. We what's going on? Up. So at number three, I had your boy Nick Cam Ward. At number two, which is crazy. This was tough. Because I went back and forth on this one, but at number two, I'm gonna put. Possibly the greatest running back prospect we've ever seen. And that's Ashton Genty from Boise State. Putting a, a mid-major on his back, a non-power five on his back. It's not a mid-major. It's a non-power five on his back. Dominating Oregon. Dominating every team he goes against. This man is untouchable, untackleable. You don't want to face him. He's the best running back prospect since Adrian Peterson and... Unfortunately for him, we have a generational one-of-one talent that plays both sides of the football, and that's Travis Hunter. Mm. And it's hard to keep that man out from number one of Heisman because he's arguably the best defensive back in college football and should be in the running for best wide receiver in college football as well. How many times in history have we ever been able to say that? He's Shohei Otani in football form, Mm. and – Football is a much more violent game than baseball, so it's a lot tougher to do something like that, and I think he deserves his flowers for it. Travis Hunter is my Heisman pick, and it's pretty simple. You want to go next or you want to wait? No, nah, I'd actually I'd like to see what you guys have to say because I don't want to I don't want to just go at Matty J and just disagree with him. Who would you even put well, him over? All right, I'll go next. I'm going to preface that I don't. I don't know college. Yeah, I don't ball, watch a so ton of college ball. These guys. I know enough do, to do a top three, but right. yeah, these guys are definitely going to do the heavy lifting here. But 
Um, Matty J, I pretty much have the same list. At three, it's Cam. Not pretty much. I have the same list. At three, it's Cam Ward. At two, it's Ashton Jainty. And at one, it's Travis Hunter. I just – it's it's tough, man. I know Jainty's doing crazy generational things at the running back position, but this guy Travis Hunter is the best in the nation at two positions on two different sides of the football. Uh, to me, that's – that's a Heisman, like a guy literally doing something we've never seen before. So I'm going to go with Travis Hunter as my Heisman winner. Um, I like Dylan Gabriel, quarterback, Oregon. I literally just looked him up. At number three? At number three, yeah, yeah, number oh, three. Just... No, 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 please. Um, huh. yeah, I, Cam Ward's cool. I do like him. I like his uh, I like his play. I've seen him a couple times. I'm not the avid college football watcher, but I've, I've seen him a couple times, but he just he doesn't look too uh, – I don't know if he looks too comfortable. I'm not gonna lie, he's nonchalant. Yeah, he's like, I, sure, I guess. Number two, I'm gonna say uh, Ashton Jainty. Running backs come and go, and they don't last. Um, that's just who, I'm going based off like who would be the better um, NFL fit. It's not how it works though in, in Heisman. Voting. I know it's right. it's so it's just, yeah. I, I guess that's true. But Ashton Jainty still number two. You've seen great running back years for a couple times. And but you've never seen what Travis Hunter is doing. That's why he's number one. That's all. Okay. Go ahead, pickle. Oh man, I didn't. <laughs> you didn't want to be the only one to you. you but you didn't. You didn't want to do nah, it. But now you feel shit. like you have to. Come on, is pickle, that what's happening here? He's yeah, do I didn't want to do it. He a, thought I was gonna take Genty. Yeah. Um. No, nah, but I gotta. I'm not gonna just say shit just to say shit. Right. At number three, I have Cam Ward. He's having a great year. He really is, and. If we weren't seeing two generational yep. prospects in front of him, he'd be running away with the award. And I think if he continues winning football games, it's not even about his play, but if he continues winning football right. games and they end up a top one, two, or three team in the country by the time the season's over, he probably will win the award. But given where things stand right now, I have Genty at number two, and – if we did this a week ago, I would have said it was Genty number one, and it wasn't even close. He's still phenomenal. He's on Barry Sanders level paces right now. It's mm -hmm. kind of absurd. He just stands in the backfield like fucking Michael Myers, and then just runs you over. And those edits are crazy. I've seen those clips. Yeah. They yeah, are fire. He's disgusting. Though. And it's pretty underrated. How I mean, I know this doesn't really help his Heisman case, but just how complete of a running back he is. I mean, yep. I'm, I'm seeing breakdowns of his pass pro, which he looks pretty good. And as a pass catcher, he's not involved as much as, you know, you'd like as a fantasy football. Last year he was. Yeah, as much as you'd like as a fantasy football player. But when you're able to run the ball a million times a game and run for pretty much five yards of carry every single time, you don't need to pass the ball. And nope. they're winning football games, too. I know the competition isn't isn't, you know, anything crazy but they're winning more football games than people thought they're a ranked team so he has to be number two and like I said this past week for me that was the Heisman mo moment for Travis Hunter I mean the awards speak for him for itself he was the big 12 offensive player of the week and the big 12 defensive player of the week he had his best game of the season on both sides of the ball what do you have over 100 receiving yards he yep. had two receiving touchdowns and I'm pretty sure he had four pass breakups in yep. the game on Saturday so that that to me was his Heisman moment to be able to do it because he's been doing it all year on both sides of the ball, obviously. But to be able to string a game together, doing it on both sides of the ball at that level, being best the best in the nation yeah. for, for a game. So right now I have Trav at number one. But like I said, if if Cam Ward keeps winning football games, it's going to be pretty hard to not give him the Heisman. I I think this is... You know, a lot of people may say this is just a two-man race right now, but I, I think Cam Ward's just as much in the race as the other two guys. It's just, like, Boise hasn't played many people of note. They lost to Oregon by three, who's currently number one Pretty in the country, crazy, which yeah. is what? All over or maybe not by three, but it was a very close game. And ran all over them. Bro. All over them. And that's a bunch of five stars and, and yeah, big-time transfers. Defense, like, right? like very good defense. Yeah, yes, that's one. no joke. Yeah. <laughs> that team is number one in the country right now. Like, they just beat Ohio State, who is the most expensive team in college football right now as well. So, I, I think that's a big one for the resume for Boise State. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, shit, Travis Hunter, bro. He's one of one. He just can't right. even argue it. What do you got, I actually, um, I'm curious if you, we did a, th a top three. If you were to do a top five, who would you include in your fourth and five? 
I assume Shador and Jalen, regardless of the spot. No, Jalen wouldn't Dylan make Gabriel it for me. Dylan Gabriel's got to be in. Dylan there. Gabriel's my four. Sh mm. But, bro, that shit don't matter, bro. No, like, it doesn't. They're it, out of it. It's, it's They're out of it. It's a, yeah. it's, a, it's a two man race, in my personal opinion, right now. But. Okay, this is my concern with you, though. Um. Originally, nervous, earlier, no, I'm not. I'm just trying to collect my thoughts. Uh, earlier in the in this pod, you said that you don't know if Cam Ward is QB one in college football. I don't think he is. I think that's crazy. I think. Wait, give your list first. Well, okay. So if I if I have to give my top three, my three, I would have Genty S three. I would have Genty under Travis only because, yes, he's having a season. We keep saying we we he's having a season like Barry Sanders. He's having a or one of a kind season, blah blah blah. But people have already done this before. I think Clem, you're right. I think uh, running backs do come and go. That's just that's just how it is. I mean, look at Saquon. I was the biggest Saquon fan when he was in Penn State coming out of college. Even even before he was a Giant, I was a big. Mm -hmm. um, he never did what what this man is doing though. He never, never did, did, but he had the same. Doing, he had the same potential. He just didn't have the as good of a college season, which is okay. I think um, Saquon had more magnitude on the field too. He was returning kicks and being on offense. Isn't Jinty just on offense? Yeah, but Saquon, he's having like the great one of the greatest the running back touchdown. seasons in college football history. He has like 19 touchdowns right now in nine no, I games. Know. No, I know. Like he's probably games. having it's, the best yeah, he, running back season in college football since the turn of the century. So yes. It's like and it's there, probably not that close. It's not. Any it's, other like running back who's won Heisman since the turn of the century, he, his stats are like smoking them out of the water. Like it's not even And close. he's not playing full halves of football games, bro. Yeah. Like he's playing a first half yeah, going for 250 for like 300 yards in, and getting out. Halves, yeah. Like no, he's insane. Is he tapping out or is he? No, he don't. He does not tap no, out. He's not tapping out. He does not tap out. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's fair. So you have him at three, Genty. Genty, I have at three. Um, I know the comments are gonna get me. They're gonna, oh, this guy wants to be different so bad. It is what it is. Um, you just have a love affair with this man. Mm. Who? Cam? Either number two so or number, number one. I don't know where he is. My number two is Travis. I, th I think Travis is better than Genty. Is he having a better season? You can't really. They play different positions. You can't compare the two statistic wise. The greatness of what they're both doing right now is just like completely. Like they're great for Trump's. completely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no I don't think no, it's Trump. it's Trumps. No, I think they're right there with each other. I just think, like like I said, their greatness is so different right now. Who did you have at one, Chris? I, mean, I had pick, Travis at one. You got Travis at one? We yeah. all had I agree. I think Travis is a unicorn. He's just different. He's just yeah. he's different. He's clearly better than everybody else on the field. He's obviously the best person on the field at all times. Even when he was in high school, you guys remember his high school tape? His high school, his high school tape was, was filthy. It was nuts. Disgusting. Um, even when he was playing with fucking destroying, recording yeah. him on the sidelines, he's been doing this. Um, however, that being said, that being said, <clears throat> at my number one, I have Cam Ward. I think the difference in college is winning games. Colorado six and two. Colorado six and two. Boise State's six and two. I think. No, well. they're seven and one. They're seven and one. Yeah, they only lost to Oregon. They almost lost last week to UNLV. They almost. They, and, they didn't though. But he. And Miami Genty didn't has play almost that great. lost in every single. Okay. Almost every single game. Did they you played. watch the game where they played Cal? Yes, I watched that game. Did you watch? They the almost whole game? lost. They almost lost. And Cam Ward is the only motherfucker in college football that could throw a pick. A Daniel Jones looking pick, a terrible looking pick, and come back and win the game oh, down twenty five. The, the next, the next that's play. That's part of the problem, though. What's part? Of he's the problem? not having so a season. He's not. Ha I'm not saying that. I'm saying in college, like right now, he's not having a season that he talked he's about. In comparison he's, he's, to other quarterback seasons, he's probably having amongst he's like having those the, big schools. He's probably having the best quarterback season since Joe Burrow. He's having. He's carrying Miami into a that. top five ranked college. He's had a better season Four. since him. Since Burrow? Statistically? Or uh, winning overall, in... Overall, like in your You can think off the top of your head. Like, yeah. give us some... Who are the last few? Jaden, Caleb. Who won prior to that? Um, Does yeah. Bryce have one? Did Bryce win? Bryce won one. Uh, I'm saying. I, I guess... But we also like nobody is put like up he's the, playing at a yeah I playing at a very I, high level. I'm not saying no, otherwise. No, he's playing at a Heisman level. Like uh, again, Heisman. my point yeah, was those like those other two didn't exist. He'd be the yeah. Heisman. Run away, run away. Okay, but you can make the same case for all three of them. Oh uh, yeah, 
I think it's, it's like, wrong, I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm not mad. Weird thing, if the season ended right now, I'm not mad if any of the three of them won it. I think they all have. I think I do think Cam Ward has just as good of a case as the other two guys. I just I really disagree do. with that. I think my my set in stone is when it comes down to the, you could either say most important, mo- like hardest position in sports, if you want to consider that over pitcher or whatever, hardest position in football, regardless. This no, man's playing this at such an elite level and such a nonchalant level. He's beating people <laughs> by accident. He's beating people without trying to beat them. They also haven't played too many good teams, to be fair. Yeah, but they weren't supposed to be. Been a very quiet. They were. they were ranked highly, though. But you though. can't say that if if the argument is Genty. Who has Genty played besides Oregon? But that that loss to Oregon as Boise State against the number one team in the in college football, that still holds weight because Oregon is so good. Because Oregon That's is so fair. good, and you yes. put up two fifty against Oregon on the ground when nobody else is really doing shit like that. I mean, they have a great O line. Nobody gives the O line credit. Bro, he literally doesn't get that. He gets hit so much and never, ever, ever goes down or doesn't I let people tackle him. I understand. However, he's not in charge of the the plays. He's not if in you, so if your argument is just he's degree of difficulty, then yeah, Positional then I get value. that. Like I can't say anything about that. Then you're then that's fair. Totally <laughs> fair. But that is that not what That's the, not what Heisman is for me though. It's come on though. Who provides the most value to Where their team. Where was Miami so last year? So if you year? plug any running back into that Boise State offense, you think they're just as good as Ash and Genty? Absolutely not. But do, do you I think th- Boise State is seven and one without Genty? Yeah, but I don't think no. there's a quarterback in college football who could do what Cam Ward. I That's completely disagree with that statement. I think Shadur How? Sanders could get plugged in and they'd be eight and zero. You're out of your eight mind. Eight and zero football team. Shadur so, Sanders. Bro. Yes. I don't think Mr. So. Bust down my AP perfect timing? That's Shador saying? <laughs> like, if you think, not- look, if you want to think Shador is a better prospect than Cam Ward, that's that's fine. I don't I, I don't mind that. But, like, based on the way they're playing right now, like, it's it's Cam Ward and it's everyone else. And that's just what it is. Where was Miami last year? That's just what it is. I'm saying if you plug him into Miami. I know, but what I'm saying what is I'm the saying. way that they're do. they're playing football right there now, right it's it's Cam Ward's far and away the better the best quarterback in college football right now. Right now, yeah. Like, situation yes, like he's a, saying like if you can't take expensive. anyone else and plug them in and they'll I agree. be uh, but I disagree with that. I just I, I think Shador would be good in Miami, but I think the way Cam Ward's playing right now, I don't think there's a quarterback in college on, football who could replicate what he's doing. I have something else to say. Shador mm. would not be shit if, if oh. Travis Hunter wasn't on his fucking What? Team. I'm being dead serious. Man. What? No, Do you see the receiving ball, ball, but... Bro, Travis type missed type a type whole type. like game, basically, That's... and Shador went and won that game. Against who? Throwing to Will Shepard. Against who? Do you know who Will, Will Shepard is? Will Shepard is good. Oh, my God, brother. He's good for a college Will receiver. good. He's mid at best. He's good for he had for like an NFL seven receiver. drops in one of the games. He's not good. He's not good because for an he has NFL. Shador wife. Sanders throwing him the ball, bro. Damn. What? <laughs> He's the most accurate quarterback in college football. Shador? Yes. Is that accurate? Son? Oh my god. <laughs> yes. No, yes. He's playing some good ball, but I I. I think right now it's in terms of quarterbacks, it's Cam Ward and everyone else right now. In numbers, I agree. No, no not just in the Heisman number, case, I agree. No, not just that. Just the way they are playing the position right now. It, Cam Ward's in a tier of his own right now. Everything included, numbers, winning games, whatever you want to include in it. It's Cam Ward and it, it, it had the bro. He's again, like I said, he's having probably the best quarterback season in the past like five years he's the only quarterback in college football that you could put on a team like miami with a dog shit defense that they have they have a decent o-line they have a been far better offensive line than colorado does it's the worst they one of the worst, worst offense they, i think shador would be state. playing good ball if he was in cam ward's situation don't get me wrong i just think cam ward's Not. playing better ball than shador would be playing because i personally just think cam ward's just a better football player right now mm. I think he's a better football player, period. Cam Ward is the only person you could strap into Miami with that mid. You want to talk about mid, mid over receiving core. They have Xavier Restrepo. And who Restrepo else? is going to lead Miami in receiving yardage history in, in and who their else? program's history. He, but can, he's only doing that because Cam Isn't that Ward the guy who played like seven break. years? No. Oh. No. That's the tight end. Tight end. Oh, okay. My bad. Seven but, years? Yeah, yeah. They have another that's tight end that's great. really good, Nick. Um, As a super duper senior. Uh, they both have yeah. flaws, too. Have. Like, I know your big thing with Cam Ward, Matty J, is he makes silly little mistakes. And I don't think Shador makes those levels of mistakes. But Shador also 
has a tendency, and I know Colorado's O line is bad. There's all, but he, it's he, the offense is quite literally. They don't I have know, a run he, game. They don't have an O line. They it's Shador. I know, but he make he makes some silly mistakes too in terms of just holding on to the ball too long. And I and guess that's gets, kind of a Cam does thing. that too, though. I know, no, they both play. neither of them are perfect prospects. Like no, the, by no means. By, I agree. Yeah, by no stretch of the imagination are either of these guys some type of generational prospect right now. But, I think they will both be successful in the NFL depending on where they go. Yeah. I, I am for that. I'm not saying that Cam Ward is not a bad quarterback prospect. He has the highest potential in this class by far. By far. But it just depends on who he ends up with. What, so, what team? the best quarterback potential or just best potential for a player? Best, well, if you're the best quarterback, he's the quarterback. you're the best player in the class. Uh, I, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess. So, but I just think Shadur is the better current quarterback prospect. But college football quarterback, yes, right now it is Cam Ward. I'm not disagreeing with that. But I'm just saying he's number three in my but personal opinion. But why shouldn't Cam honest. Ward win the Heisman? Because the other two are having historical seasons. Okay, but it, but if it's about winning? It's not, though. It's, I think that's it's about, not, like, generational but the last two talent. Years, like bro, it's about the last two people that have won the Heisman, Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams, both of those teams – did not win a whole bunch. Like they won a lot, but they did not win for college football standards like that. But if they, I think Jaden had four losses and Caleb had three or four too. So sounds right. It's not. It's not that. That's not what it matters. That's not what matters. Cam Ward isn't doing shit that we've never seen before. Yes, Travis yeah. Hunter and Genty are doing shit that we haven't seen. Yeah, and I, if you want to say all, oh, but they they say Genty's doing what Barry Sanders did. That shit was thirty five years ago, bro. Like we, <laughs> we see it was a we long see that time shit? ago. See that yeah, shit? yeah. I see that shit. I saw it. I haven't. I the get your sentiment, though, Nick. Like the quarterback is the most yeah, position. Value. Quarterbacks yeah. do win high. Like, yeah, I'm sure I if you get do the poll, it, like quarterbacks win Heisman's every other probably year. Ninety three yeah, like, percent they gave, of the time. Yeah. They gave and he Mark, is the best quarterback in college football, like he said. Yes, yeah. they gave Mark Ingram a Heisman, though. That's insane. I think Ingram went for two Who's close Mark to two K that, that year or some shit. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that is him. That's and like twenty seven touchdowns. You know, he had a crazy year, but like Genty's like gonna blow it out of the water. <laughs> By far, that's yes. what I'm saying. Yeah, it's generating. College football must have sucked that year. Yeah. Nah, Ingram was a dog. And he, he was, 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 was that good he was actually. Ingram was, was that him. good. Okay. Yes. I believe it. Yeah. I, so I, was nice. I love how good college football is this year. College football is sick, bro. I've been watching it this year. Playoff is the greatest thing of all time. And and the teams are good too. Like they were saying, like uh. Army and Navy, it's like the yeah. Teams Navy just got really the brakes beat off them by Notre um, Dame, though. Oh, fifty-one fourteen. It it was bad. Oh, Irish. Woo-hoo. It was bad. Irish. I was at that game actually. Don't it was bad. You. Yeah, it was wow. bad. Right. Um, so yeah. The teams are just better too. I don't want to spin back. All I have to say is Miami would not be in the in the spot that it is without Cam Ward. Cam Ward single handedly. That's there's one goal. other. Goal. As I said, there. I, as I said, there's only one other quarterback in my opinion that could do what he's doing. And it's that they could plug in. Do you really think Shador could is like the? Like, like I said, oh. I don't know about them like that, but Shador, uh, Pete, so, I, I can't even really So here's the thing, so here's the thing, so here's the thing. People will say, will discredit Shador because we, do, like, people don't like Shador. Yeah. And I, shit, I don't like what he says. I don't like how some of, some of the way he acts. Like, I don't know how that's all going to work in the NFL. I yeah. don't. But when I watch the man play, there is not a quarterback in college football that is as accurate as him, or and look, he doesn't have the well, most. Why, why are you sleeping on Cam Ward's accuracy though? Because he's. I'm not sleeping on Cam Ward's accuracy. I'm saying Shador Sanders is the most accurate quarterback in college football. That is objectively true. Objectively. Objectively, not subjectively. Objectively, you cannot debate it. It's fact. How about my boy Jackson Dort? Oh, don't even get me started. That boy sucks, dude. I think he Jackson Dort's be better than Shador. Jackson Dort. What the fuck are you talking Come about, on, Nick? Dog. What'd you say? I wish I could. Bro, agree Shador with you. has <laughs> Travis Hunter. I love Jackson. Travis Dort. Hunter, the kid. Jackson, Jackson Dort, Dort, Dort is one of the more mid quarterbacks in right. college football right now. Respect my boy, Stop. brother. On, he's gonna so turn Ole around. Miss chokes in every big game. Bro, there's still time. And he's bro. part of the reason for it. Mahomes in college again. Ah, Dylan Raiola. Fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, we love Dylan Raiola actually. Right. Dylan Raiola will be good in two years. Um, give him some time. That's the Heisman. Um. I feel like we should not do the fantasy team builders. Yeah, I agree. No, I'm down. I'm so fine with that. Because <laughs> we still got to do some TikToks. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I'm down for that. You want to just come sit? Yeah, just. No, no, no. no. Just, come, just get in the frame. We're not time-stamming. Just get, get in the frame. In just get back in. Sit on my no, frame. No, no, no. Stay here. Sit. We're fine. 
Stay there, Nick. You were in the episode. That's the food. Oh my You're good. God. How'd you just fling that? It's Why the food you... section of no, things. I thought it just fell off the num, fucking... num. All right. Come on, <laughs> Matty J. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, follow us on all of our socials. Happy Halloween to all of you guys. Let us know if you guys are going to the Jet game. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, we're yeah, leaking no. numbers. If you guys are at the Jets game, link up with us. We're tailgating. We're having a good time. We'll do, you'll get in some content, we, some interviews. Let's go. Yes, yes. You're going to be there, right? I'll be there. I'll okay, be fire. I'll be behind the camera. Happy Halloween from the ball game pod family right here, Thanks. including Clemmy. Thank you for coming on today. Let's go, go Clemmy. I love the Thank you. Clemmy, what do you think? Clemmy, what do you, so think? What'd you of think of your ball game debut? I liked it. I think I definitely could have prepared a lot better. Um, Me too. But I had, a, right. I, no, but no, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Preparation. I would do. Pete I would do it again. It's about Pete fun. tapped out. I'm. Yeah. I'm still sitting you in the same you spot. Around. You said, "Hey, I don't know yeah. dick about college <laughs> football." Right? Anthony Richardson over. Yeah, I don't know dick about college, but I had a <laughs> lot of fun. Uh, all right. I love all the cases everybody made. It's a lot to think about. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. It's a fun time on this. Thing. I like it. it. Really is. I've never. I'll probably watch it now. Just like everybody else. No, no. Oh, Yo, I really hope they play Fiend at the Jets game. Yo, me too. <laughs> that was legendary, by the way. Funny. What? Your TikTok. The, oh, the one on my that account? Yeah. One know, singular that really TikTok. It was, it, yeah. you wanna finish, uh, did we just finish it? Did you finish outro? Nope. No, 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 no. Not I just right. wanted to give Clemmy his flowers. Yeah, I was giving Clemmy his flowers. Fucking Perry the platypus. Why do you not want to give your brother flowers? Jesus. With that, ball game.